Do you want to learn how to create a news or a blog website? Well, in this tutorial, I will show you how to create a website like this. A website full with news articles displayed beautifully on your homepage. Those same articles can be displayed like this. Maybe you want to have a cryptocurrency website with the latest news. People can follow you. And if you want to, you can let your visitors decide to have a dark mode or a light mode in your website. Maybe you want to have a news website with the latest news about gadgets and software updates. And you can display all those articles like this. And in this tutorial, I will show you step by step how to create pages like this from scratch. Maybe you want to make a local news website about your local area or about your country. And with this theme, there are tons of ways to create a beautiful news website. Maybe you want to blog about fashion and showcase your latest blog post like this. Or you want to create a food blog with the latest recipes. And when you go to a recipe, you can help people with the ingredients and they can check it off. And below every post, you can let people share it, tell something about yourself, show related posts. Now I'll show you how to configure this all to your wishes. You can even place advertisements. Let people leave comments through Discuss or WordPress or Facebook. The sky is the limit with this theme. Maybe you want to blog about anything you're passionate about and display it like this. Or create tutorials on how to become a better designer, how to learn coding, how to choose the right web hosting. Or you want to travel the world and share your latest updates like this. Or like this. Or this. Or this. There are tons of templates you can choose. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create any of these websites and how to configure them to your wishes. We will create a homepage from scratch using Elementor and adjust the style to our wishes. Of course, we'll talk about creating converting blog posts and then using the Genius theme, we will add more features to the blog post like a review, views, sharing options, likes and dislikes and more. Using split posts, we can divide blog posts, also known as articles, into multiple parts so we can get more page views Visitors will see more ads and in that way we can increase the revenue of your website. I show you how to adjust the style of all the articles or specific articles in your website and how to create sidebars with specific widgets for all articles or for specific articles. We will talk about the header, how to choose a template and configure it. And we will do the same with the footer. We will create different kind of mega menus. And when your website is up and running, we will talk about monetizing your website with Google AdSense and with affiliate links. Two great ways to generate money for your news or blog website. A third way to generate revenue from your website is by selling premium articles or subscriptions that give visitors access to all the premium content in your website. So when people pay you money, they get access to all your premium articles. In the end of the tutorial, we will talk about applying SEO to your website so you will be found better on the internet, about selling products on your website, we will talk about affiliate marketing and about email marketing. When you follow all the steps in this tutorial, you will have a professional blog or news website that is ready to generate revenue. When I go to fast for you, you can go to the settings of the YouTube video and change the playback speed to a slower one, or you can click on the left arrow on your keyboard and go back five seconds in the video. In the description of the video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part of the video, you can click on one of the timestamps and you go directly to that part of the video. If you like what you're about to learn, then please like this video. It would mean a lot to me. And feel free to subscribe for more upcoming tutorials about WordPress and how to make money with your WordPress website. And if you have any question, feel free to leave a comment. I do my best to answer them all. I get a lot of comments, but I do my best. And then I would like to show you the four steps we will take in order to create an amazing news or blog website. So there are four things we need to do. If you don't have it yet, I will show you how you can get your own domain name and web hosting and I can give you 70% discount. After that, we will install WordPress. Then I will show you how to get the Genius theme. Then we will create our amazing website. If you already have a domain name and web hosting and you have already installed WordPress, I will show you on the screen right now where you need to go in order to continue with this tutorial. Now it's really time to get started. The first things we need are a domain name and web hosting. Let me tell you what a domain name is and what web hosting is. A domain name is the address of your website. So if I would go to facebook.com, facebook.com is the domain and everything you see on this website is the web hosting. Web hosting is a really fast computer that is turned on 24 seven with all the information on your website. And you can rent it for a few dollars per month. It's like having a house. If you want people to visit you, you need to give them your address and your domain name is the address of your website. So your domain name is the address of your website and everything you see over here is the web hosting. If Facebook would have no domain name, it would look something like this. And that can be quite a challenge to remember by heart. 
and that's why we need a domain name. And when we have a domain name, we want to display things on our website and that's why we need web hosting. If you have that already, that's great. Then you can skip this part. If you don't have it, go to webhosting1616.com, hit enter, and then you can click on the link, go to SiteGround. I love SiteGround. SiteGround is in my opinion, the best web hosting provider there is, and I'm not the only one with that opinion. In a Facebook web hosting group with more than 5,000 members, SiteGround is mentioned most when it comes to the best web hosting provider. And I agree with them. I scroll down a bit and there are three plans you can choose. And the best value for your money is the Grow Big plan. And what is the difference between the Grow Big plan and the Startup plan? Here with the Grow Big plan, you can have unlimited websites. Look at this, unlimited websites. And with the Startup plan, you only have one website. And all the time people are upgrading from Startup to Grow Big because they want to create more websites. So I suggest Grow Big and you can always upgrade later if you want to. Over here you can have unlimited websites, 20 gigabyte of web space. Well, most websites are 200 megabytes. So you can have up to 100 websites with this plan. You can have up to 100,000 visits per month. And I hope you will get that because that will mean a lot of business for you. And then if you have that, you can always upgrade to the Go Geek plan. And then you will have 40 gigabyte of web space. And you can have up to 400,000 visits per month. This is the plan I have right now because I have a lot of websites and a lot of visitors, but keep in mind, you can always upgrade later. So I will start with the Grow Big plan and more great things about it is you can have free SSL. So your website will be secured with some web hosting providers that cost money. Here it is free. You have daily backups. That's amazing. If you somehow mess things up, SiteGround got you covered. You will have a backup of the day before and of the day before that. Free CDN. That means that your website will be fast throughout the whole world. No matter where the visitors come from, your website will be blazing fast. You can have unlimited free email accounts. And really important, this is great for e-commerce. And if you somehow really don't like it, you have a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk for you. So I will choose to grow big plan by clicking here. Now we need to choose a domain name. If I would say facebook.com, I want to buy facebook.com. I click on proceed. Of course, it will say You've chosen an invalid domain name because it's already taken. So you need to choose a domain name that is still available. What I would advise everybody in the world to do is get your own domain name with your first name and your last name. I hope it's still available for you. And otherwise you can use a company name or a custom name. And if you offer local services, you can place your hometown in the domain. For instance, web design slash. The great thing is that you can choose a lot of different extensions, .com, .net, .org. I always suggest use .com or the local one from your country. I go for Genius Tutorial. So let's see if it's still available. I click on Proceed. Yes, it says congratulations. Your domain is available for registration with your hosting account. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Now I can leave some details over here. First, my email address, jk24co at gmail.com. I need to create a password and I need to confirm my password. And then over here, I need to say from which country I am. I'm from the Netherlands. And I will fill in my details. Ferdy, Corpusuk, Ferdy, and Anna. Media, if you have a company, fill in your name over here in your vet slash tax ID. If you fill in your tax ID, you don't have to pay taxes for this order. It's okay. Great. Uh, SiteGround gives feedback at once, which is nice. I'm from this city, this street. And my zip code, if I would say it wrong, it will correct me. It will say, Hey, you need to remove the space. And then over here, I need to fill in my phone number. And it's really important that it's the correct number. So say plus three, one, six, and then your phone number. Really important to have this over here, the, the country code. I scroll down and depending on where you come from, there can be local payment providers. So if I would enter this website from the Netherlands, I would see idle over here. You will maybe see PayPal. I will use credit card, so I will fill in my details. And then we go to the purchase information. We go for the grow big plan and the data center. We can choose a few depending on where you want to focus on. If you want to focus on people from the United States, Keep it in the United States. If you want to focus on people from the Netherlands or somewhere near the Netherlands, choose Germany or the Netherlands. I want to go for, for people worldwide. So I choose the USA and the period is 12 months. We pay $6.69 per month and then we can have unlimited websites on our grow big account, which is amazing. And then if we scroll down, I highly 
encourage you to get domain privacy. It will cost you $12 per year, but it will save you so much spam because if you don't turn it on, a lot of companies can see that there's a new domain name with your personal information, with your phone number, your address, your email account, your email address, and then they can send you spam emails like, hey, I can make a logo for you. I can do SEO for you. You don't want that. So for $12, you don't have that. Then I scroll down and I will pay a total amount of $110.27. It can be a little bit more or less with you, depending on where you come from. And with this amount, you have a domain name or web hosting for a complete year. And you can add more domains to your account and create multiple websites. And they're all blazing fast. And there's a great support if you get stuck somewhere. I confirm that I've read the terms and service and I agree with them. And I would like to receive news updates from SiteGround. If you got it through web hosting 15.com, you don't pay more, but you get an amazing discount and I do get credit for it. So it's a win-win situation. And then I click on pay now. And then the great thing is that our website will be live immediately. We don't have to wait for 24 hours. It will be live at once. If everything goes right, you should see this right now. And that's amazing. And then I want to congratulate you with your domain name and web hosting. If you don't see that, it can be that you see something like this. If that's the case, fill in the confirmation number you get in the text message, and then you should be able to proceed. And in some cases, uh, SiteGround will put an amount on your uh, credit card account and you need to fill in that number so they know for sure it is your credit card account. And you can do that by going to your account or your credit card account or by calling your credit card company. I had to call them. I want to check everything so you know exactly what to do in every situation. I hope both of those confirmations do not appear for you, but now you know what to do when you see those two screens. So let's continue. And my account was successfully created. How great is that? I can proceed to the customer area. Then I need to log in with the details I use to sign up for SiteGround. Now it says welcome 30 and here we can set up our website. But what I rather do, I rather go to websites. Then it says over here, uh, set up incomplete. So I click on finish site setup. Then I choose my domain name, which I have over here. I click on continue and I want to skip and create an empty site. I don't need those two tools. I scroll down and I click on finish. And now it says it will take less than two minutes before your website is created. And now it says your website with your domain is created. And I want to go to the site tools by clicking here. The first thing I want to do, I want to make my website secure. So I go to security. SSL manager. Then I select my domain name and then I select let's encrypt. I click on get. This can take a minute. So we have to wait. There it is. Now I can configure the HTTPS, but what I rather do here below, I go to actions and force HTTPS and then I turn this on and that's it. Now I go to WordPress, install a manage. Then I want to install WordPress. Even if I'm going to install WooCommerce, I rather start with WordPress. So I click on select. Then I choose my domain name. I can choose the language for my website, the installation path. That means that I can install the website on my domain name.com forward slash new or test, but I rather install this on my main folder. And then I need to create a login name for WordPress and a password and an email address. And I scroll down. I don't need to have uh, the WordPress starter. I click on install and WordPress will be installed on our brand new domain name. And there it is. Now WordPress is installed on our brand new website. So what we have, we have an admin panel. I open it in a new tab and we have the website. I open it also in a new tab. Then I close this window. What we see over here is the back end of our website. Here we're going to configure our website, create pages, create blog posts, upload images. And then over here, we can see the front end. This is what people will see. When people enter your domain name right now, they will go right to this page. We are live. And the great thing is that our website is also secure. So this is what people will see when they enter your website. And this is where we can configure our website. Well, the first thing I want to do, I want to clean up my website. So what I will do over here at the back end, I will dismiss this message. Then I want to collapse all this stuff over here or even better go to the screen options uncheck everything. So it will not be shown. So our dashboard is clean. Then I want to go to the plugins 
And for now, I want to remove all the plugins by selecting this checkbox, bulk actions, deactivate. We first need to deactivate plugins before we can remove them. Apply. And since I've deactivated them, I see that my menu is a little bit cleaner. Those two things are not active anymore. Bulk actions again, delete, apply. I'm okay. Great. Then I go to the posts. There's one example post. I want to bring it to the trash. Go to the trash and empty the trash. The same with pages. I go to the pages, select both pages, move to the trash, apply. Then I go to the trash. I empty the trash. I go to appearance themes. And the themes I do not use right now, this one, 2020, I don't use that. I delete it. Okay. And this one, I will leave that for later because I want to show you an example of what you can do with themes. Then over here at the right top corner, I can edit my profile. I can change the look and feel of the back end. So you can choose something you prefer. I prefer the default one. Right now it says Howdy Ferdy Corp. So when I write a blog post, it will say written by Ferdy Corp. I rather use my full name. So over here, my first name is Ferdy. My last name is Corpus Hook. And then I can change my display name publicity as Ferdy Corpus Hook. And that's what you now see over here. Then over here, I can have an email address. And this email address is linked with a Gravatar account. I'll talk about it in a minute. And because it is, it has a special profile picture. I can change it by clicking here and then I go to Gravatar. I can sign up. And if I sign up with the same email address I use over here, then the image I upload at Gravatar will be displayed over here and also in your website where you want to display this. So if I've written a blog post and I want to show my face, it will show this image. I can say something about myself. So if I created a blog post and it says something about the author, this text will appear and I can create a new password. And I can update my profile. If I want to go to the front end, I click over here. If I want to go to the back end, I click over here. So I actually don't need this. So this looks better in my opinion. This is how it looks. This is how it looks right now. It's cleaner and it helps me to be productive in creating a beautiful website. I want to go through a few more settings over here at settings general. I want to make my website secure over here. So I'll add an S over here and over here. I probably need to log in again. So if I click on save changes, oh, it's all fine. But sometimes you need to log in again. And then uh, we're going to talk about the site title on the tagline later in a few minutes. And then over here, I don't want people to register. The site language, I can change it over here. The time zone, well, I live in the Netherlands, so I search for Amsterdam. There it is. And then automatically in the winter and in the summer, the right time zone is selected. And how do I want to show the date? July 25, 2022 or different. Well, I like this one. You can also create a custom one with those codes, but I prefer this one. And then the time format, I like to work with PM and AM with capitals. My week starts on Monday, so I save the changes. So I want to give my website a name right now. It's called my WordPress. If I go to google.com, and I search for Justin Bieber. The first organic result over here is Justin Bieber music. It's the website of Justin Bieber. And what do I see over here? What's the title? The title is Justin Bieber. So if you want to be found on something on a specific keyword, the best you can do is place it at the left of your title. So if I go to my website to settings general, I want to give this website a title. And I'm a photographer, I should not say welcome on my website. I am 30. Because then people have no idea what I'm doing. And then when they search for a photographer, let's say in Amsterdam, I scroll down organic results. I see photographer Amsterdam, photographer Amsterdam, photography Amsterdam. Amsterdam photographers. So be really clear in your site title about what you offer. So in my case, in this case, I would say learn how to make a WordPress website. So when people search for this, they can find me because that is my title. And then after that, I can say Ferdy Corpsuk. 
Then there's the tagline. In a few words, explain what this site is about. Learn step by step how to create your own website or the latest WordPress news. And then after that, I can also say WordPress tutorials. Since I think people are searching for WordPress tutorials more often than the latest WordPress news, I can also decide that I want to go for the tutorials. And after that, WordPress tutorials and the latest WordPress news. So my keyword WordPress is the first word and I have twice in my title. And then over here, I can say, keep up to date with the latest WordPress news. Great. I scroll down, I save the changes. Great. Then I go to the permalinks and they need to be on post name. Otherwise, if you write a blog post, it will say your domain name forward slash and then question mark P equals one, two, three. And I just want to say if I write a blog post about the latest WordPress tutorials, I want it to be my domain name forward slash the latest WordPress tutorials. If I take a look over here, I see the domain and after that photographers Amsterdam. I don't want to see P equals one, two, three because then I will not be found in Google. So post name, scroll down, save the changes. If you feel like I'm such in the mood, I'm just happy, save it twice. And then we have configured our WordPress website. So let's take a look at the front end. It looks really ugly. Let's make it look better. And in order to do that, we need to have a theme. Well, let me tell you a little bit about themes. Here's the title of my WordPress website. And this is a certain display, a certain layout. I can change the look of view by changing the theme and every theme has their specialty. So if I would go to the back end to appearance themes, right now I use the theme 2022. If I use 2021, I can activate it. What will happen? The same information will be available on your website. I still have this title over here and the subtitle, but now it is displayed in a totally different way. And that's what you can do with themes. You can change the look of view and you can add functionality. So certain themes have certain specialties. So you have your domain name and web hosting. You have installed WordPress, we have configured WordPress, and now it is time to create our amazing news or blog website. We will do that using the JNews theme. In my opinion, the best theme there is for creating blog posts and creating news websites. So let me show you how to get it. So every theme has their own features, their own configurations, and some themes are better than others. Well, in this tutorial, I will show you how to make use of the best newspaper theme there is. And in order to get it, we go to 30corp.com forward slash JNews. Hit enter. JNews is my favorite WordPress newspaper theme. Before I used the newspaper theme, but what I don't like about the newspaper theme is the tag div composer. And JNews works with Elementor, which is better in my opinion. There are so many demos and you've seen in my intro already what you can do with this amazing theme. I want to add it to the cart by clicking here. I go to the checkout and then I need to fill in a few details. 30, Korpersuk, my first name and my last name, my email account, my username, and then I create a password. I'm not a robot as far as I'm concerned and I'm really good in finding taxis. I don't need tips. I scroll down and I create an account and I continue. Then I need to fill in more details. If I have a company name, I should fill it in my address line. And if I have one, I should fill in my EU vet number. I click on save and continue. Okay. I scroll down and I want to pay securely with PayPal. You can also pay with credit card or with Skrill. I go for PayPal. And I click on pay securely with PayPal. I need to log in. I click on pay now. And my payment is complete. Now I can download the file and then I will download the complete file. What I do want to do, I want to go to my account over here to downloads. And then I click on download installable WordPress file only. Now I go to my website, I go to the back end, to appearance themes. Then I click on add new, upload a theme, and I drag this one 
installable WordPress file only file over here. And then I click on install now. Ladies and gentlemen, JNews will be installed on your computer. And when you activate it by clicking here, I said computer, I mean website. Now your website is live with the JNews theme. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Please like this video. No, of course, this is just the beginning. It looks really ugly. We're going to make it look so much better. We can do two things from this point on. We can create a complete website from scratch, or we can make use of demo content and adjust everything to our wishes. Well, in order to show you the most about this amazing theme, it is the best to choose a demo website. And from that point, I can show you all the features. So we will not skip anything. We will import a demo website and then I will show you everything you can do with this amazing theme. But when I install a demo website, it is easier to show you what is possible. So it's up to you. I suggest you find a demo uh, that is uh, that that looks like the website you have in mind. You can also follow along in this tutorial and then adjust everything to your wishes. So let's do that right now. Let's take a look at all the demos there are. So I go to the back end. I go to appearance. Genius dashboard. And it looks beautiful. What I want to do, I want to go to the second tab, import demo and style. And then there are so many demos. There are more than 150 complete websites that you can choose. So what I prefer to do, hold command or control on PC, click, 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 click. Open a few, which you think they look nice. And then control tab, and you go to this one. Maybe you want to install this one. And then from that point, we can uh, adjust it to our style and our wishes. Control tab, the next one. Control tab, control tab, control tab. So look at this. If you want to have a uh, food blog, look at this. It looks beautiful out of the box. You can link it with your Instagram account. You can create a blog post. And when you click over here, you can see the likes, the dislikes, the comments. People can share this. You can even share all the ingredients and when people use it, they can check it like, Hey, I bought this. There's so much you can do with this theme. Fashion blog. Mom and kids blog. So choose one you like or watch a tutorial where I show you from scratch how to create a beautiful news website or a blog website. I want to go for the default one. So I click on import. And I want to use the Elementor page builder. And that's one of the things I like about this theme. You can use this with Elementor, which is, in my opinion, so much better than the visual composer. Then I click on import demo and it will take a while before everything is imported. So time for a break or time to check out more demo websites. You can create something like this. And all those pages you see over here are created with Elementor and then with the JNews elements. I will show you in a minute how that works. We can uh, show the Facebook share box. We can create different kinds of headers. When I hover over it, it looks like that. Gaming website. Passion blog. So if you're passionate about something, you can use this template. So how are we doing? It's importing. Let me close all this stuff. And wait for a minute. Congratulations. I want to congratulate you on behalf of JNews with a, a complete import of your pre-made website. I click on OK. And now if you take a look at our website by clicking here, out of the box, it looks fabulous in my opinion. And as you see, it is created with Elementor. So if you want to adjust the homepage, we can do that. And I want to show you how you can do that right now. So. We've installed a demo website. I think it looks amazing and I'm impressed with all the different demos. There are so many demos and they all look amazing. So you can find the one you think is a great, great fit for your website. And now I want to show you how to create the homepage from scratch using Elementor. So I edited the page with Elementor. What I see over here, um, there are the basic settings. So I want to go to this, those three lines. 
to the user preferences, I want to make this a dark interface. And I want to add the editing handles by clicking on yes. So now I have this area, which I really like. I like those six dots, you know, those six dots do remind me about no. Okay. If I click over here, I see, uh, or I do not click, but I see a, a blue outline. That means that this is an element. So if I click over here or I click on this icon, I see the element over here, the news ticker. If I click over here, I see slider one. If I click over here, I see module five. Now, over here, let me click. What I see, I see all the elements from Elementor. If I collapse that, all the pro elements, which we do not have, since we do not use Elementor Pro in this tutorial. The general ones, I collapse them. And now here below, look at this, Genius modules. We have a lot of modules and we can really simply just drag those over here and it will fetch information from the blog post in our website. And then we can adjust things. So I can scroll down, I can change the style. That's how easy it is. And out of the box, it all looks so amazing. Okay, let's let's remove this now. I will show you how you can create something from scratch like this. With all those modules. But they're not only modules. Look at this if I scroll down. They're also heroes. Heroes are more like for the top of the page. So if I drag this over here, this is how it is displayed. When I hover over it, it looks like this. But if I go for the second style, then a color appears. And that color can be changed uh, according to what we want it to be. Or the third style. Look at that. And that's what I love about this theme. Uh, the theme is doing all the hard work. It's really hard to create something like this in JavaScript, depending on how skilled you are. And with JNews, it all, it's all there out of the box. I can change the margin. Bam. Right now it shows the date, June 27, 2022. But I can also change it to a relative date. So it says this blog post was a month ago. So many things uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I want to show you from scratch how you can create something. So uh, when you create pages in Elementor, you do not use the sidebar that comes with WordPress, but you just create your own sidebar in Elementor. And you can make it sticky if you want to, like this. So we have the, the main area where you can show the blog post, we can show advertisements, we can show anything we want, videos. You can record a video about yourself playing the guitar, upload a video and place it over here with Elementor and Genius. And there's so much more that we can do over here in advertisement, the latest post, we can stay connected. So let me show you from scratch how we can create a page like this. So I um, remove this one, I can also go to the navigator, right mouse click, delete or select, delete, double click, I can say main content, over here I can say this is the sidebar, and over here is the same thing, this is um, main area, I go to the other section, also the main area, one column and then the section over here. Also, this is an advertisement, advertisement. But I'm going to start from scratch. So here, everything is gone over here. I can get rid of all this stuff. Great. I, I leave it like this because then later I can place things over here. So I click on update and now if I refresh the page, that's what we done automatically. Everything is gone except this part because this is part of the footer. We'll talk about it later. Also, the footer can be adjusted with Elementor. So let's create our homepage from scratch. Over here, I can change the side. Maybe I want to have a really small sidebar. If I don't like it, command or control Z and it will be placed back. So I go to the Janie's hero and I can choose one. So what I actually like was that new sticker thing we had in the beginning. So then I need to go to the modules. Let me see elements, 
And here it is, the news ticker. So what you can do, you can take a look at all those elements, just play around with them, drag them over here, see what happens. And if you like it, you can keep it and you can adjust it. So I drag it over here and there it is. Now I can click on it and for every element with Elementor and JNews, you can adjust it. So right now it says trending. I can also say latest news or just latest news like that or breaking. Oh, I say trending and then you see uh, a title of the most recent blog post and the date when it was published. I can navigate through it. You see the title and the date. And as I said before, I can make it a relative date. So it will say a month ago. Well, I prefer to use a date or I can choose a custom format. The year, the month and the day. Well, I like the WordPress default one and that can also be adjusted. And I already showed you in the tutorial how you can adjust the WordPress default format in the settings of WordPress. Here I can change the icon to something else. I enable autoplay, so automatically it will change after three seconds. It goes. It can also um, animate vertical. I prefer that one. I can change the color of the background like that, but uh, we'll talk about colors later. I leave it uh, by default and then the content filter. I can say it should only show posts or only pages or landing pages. And what kind of post can be reviews, blog posts, videos it can be all. How many should there be displayed? Well, five is okay. So three offset. We're going to talk about offset in a minute. And every uh, element has their own settings. And besides the content settings, there are also style settings. So the content has everything to do with what will be displayed and the style has everything to do with the styling. So we can change the title font and we can change the meta typography. You can also change the, the block width, the column width, but uh, it's, uh, it's good as it is right now. So um, that's okay. What else? Let's talk about a hero. I want to place a hero over here. So one big image with the most recent blog post. So I can place four over here in a row like that. And as I showed you before, we can change the, the padding. Oh man, I, I hope you also like this. This is, I love this. I love it. But uh, I was, I, I didn't want to place this. Uh, let's take a look at the hero and I want to show one big image, hero 13. So that's how it will be displayed. When I hover over it, this happens and uh, I like it. And then also here, there are all those settings. I can place post or pages. I can also say uh, only reviews. Well, this is a review probably. So if I say video, I see a video and then I have the play button, man, I love it. Okay. So I, I like it as it is. And uh, of course here at the hero settings, I can change the style. And the best thing is when you, the style is a little bit the same everywhere. So I go for style three. Then I want to go back to all the elements and then I don't want to go to the hero, but to the modules. We can also go to sliders, but um, personally, I prefer not to have a slider. Okay. Let me show you. If I drag this over here, I can have the same um, blog post, but then I can go to different blog posts like that or like that. And if I update it automatically, it will be refreshed when you use this eye. So I don't have to click on the button. It's all so easy with Elementor and JNews. So um, if I would change something over here, let's say that I change the typography to something really big and I update it here automatically over here, it will be adjusted. So that's really nice. Let me bring this back. I go back and I can choose which one I want to have. And I choose this one. I want to go to the module and let me see a uh, news module three, just simply everything below each other. So I drag it over here and it will be displayed like this. Also here, how do I want to display it as well? Before I do that, I can uh, fill in a few details over here. I can select an icon, but first let me uh, select the title. I can say latest news. So since we have a title, I can have an icon. So I can search for news. So I have that icon over here and then I can change the style. So I think uh, this is nice. 
Okay. I can change the header background, the text color, the header line color. I can adjust all those colors. Then I want to go to the header filler. I can display certain categories. So if I can say, so apps, business, entertainment, food, gadgets, lifestyle, what happens? They will all appear. And if I click on them, I see all the recent blog posts or all the recent news items of that category. So fashion, you see fashion related news items, gadgets, gadgets related items, lifestyle, and I can see them all. I can also say I only want to show blog posts or news items from a certain author or only everything that has, that has a certain, a certain tag, Game of Thrones. So in that way, there are a lot of uh, filtering options. And what is the default text? All, or I can say all news items, but I prefer all. Then there's the content filter. Do I want to show posts or pages or landing pages? Or again, I can go through these options. The number of posts that will be shown, I like to show three. And then I want to have post offset. Why? Right now, I see this. I see this over here, the Legend of Zelda. But also here, I see that. So it's kind of duplicate. I don't want that. So if I say that the offset is one, I will not show the most recent post, but the one after that. So that gives me an opportunity to use multiple elements over here, show the most recent blog post and then the second one. So I don't have duplicate posts. Okay, what else can we do? Well, we can also just use basic elements over here. So maybe I want to, to drag an image over here. Well, that's possible. This one, for instance, it will help the visitors to take me really serious. Just in between the blog post and then we can continue. So I can also duplicate this area. Okay, let me go to the navigator. So I have module three twice and then the image. I want to drag the image in between the two modules. As you see. So latest news, image, more latest news. Well, of course, that's not what I want. But I can place anything over here. I can get Elementor Pro and place more Pro stuff. Uh, right now, I don't need that. But hey, it's all possibility. What else do we have? We have modules. Heroes, we have sliders, and then with the carousel. And sometimes I don't know how to say that. I can drag this here below, and also make the offset um, one, two, three, four. So I go to the content filter. I say post offset is four. So I don't see anything about PlayStation here, but here I do. And we're going to talk about ads. So I search for ads, Genius ads block. I can place it over here. It can be Google ads. We'll talk about it. It can be an image ad. So I can select an image and we have a default image over here. I can replace it later. We're going to talk about ads later. When people click over here, and they buy something through your affiliate link, you make money. So I can uh, link this to 30corp.com forward slash Genius. And when people buy that, it opens in a new tab. Through me, I get a commission. Update. So this is what we have created so far. You can also take it to the next level if you want to. Let me show you. Okay, I like to think outside of the box, especially when it will help me in my whole process of creating a website. So what I'm about to show you is thinking outside of the box and maybe it seems a little bit overwhelming and maybe it is overwhelming, but for me, this works like charm. So you can decide to watch this part before you're going to apply it. But um, yeah, maybe you're interested in what I'm talking about. If that's the case, I keep watching. We can get the best of not only both worlds, but all worlds. What do I mean by that? I can go to the back end of my website. Then I go to Genius, import demos. Still, okay, let me this back sorry now i can preview everything again in a new tab
And if you want to take the time, you can open them all. And keep in mind that all those home pages are made with Elementor. So we can get inspired from other websites. So these are default one. So if I see something I like over here, I can copy that and paste that. It's, it's, it's a little bit, um, how do you say that? It's a little bit of a workaround, but hey, it's how I like to work. So if I would like to have this, a display like this, what I can do, I can go to SiteGround, login. Again, it's, it's a workaround. It takes time, but I just want to show you that it's possible. I go to websites, site tools, then I go to WordPress, install and manage, select WordPress. We've done it, so I'm going a little bit fast. I choose a subfolder demo. Then I fill in my email address. And the more you do this, the faster you become at it. I like it to do things over here in the second admin panel. And since we've created a website, in my case, geniustutorial.com forward slash demo, I can still use the same license of Genius. So WordPress is being installed right now at geniustutorial.com forward slash demo. I go to the admin panel. I go to appearance themes, add new, upload themes, choose file. Normally this is how I work a little bit faster. Which one is it? This one install now. Activate. Activate Genius license. Okay. Import demo style. And what did I see? Uh, cookbook. Where am I? Cookbook. So I search for cookbook. Oh, it's called food. So I click on import on my new demo website. I use Elementor and I click on import demo. Meanwhile, I don't have to wait. I can just go to my current website and keep on doing amazing things over here. You know what? Let's get rid of this. Then over here, let's see how we're doing. Great. Now it's imported. Now I go to this website and there it is. I added page with Elementor. And look at this right mouse click copy. I go to my website. Let's go to a new area, right mouse click, paste it. I know it takes some time, but you get exactly what you want. So what else can we do? I can go to the other websites, through the other websites. If there's something I like. This area, for instance, I can import it. So let me fast forward how I do this. There's travel. I go to the same website. Go to Genius import demo. Let me see travel. I click on import Elementor import demo. I go to the website. Edit with Elementor. I scroll down. There it is. Let me see. I think, yeah, it's um, two sections. So I go to the navigator. Copy. Command tap. Right mouse click paste. And then the second one. Right mouse click copy. Oh, paste. There you go. Click over here. Make it pixel. Perfect. So great. So we have a sidebar over here and here we don't. So what we can do over here, we can place sidebar stuff. So again, I can go through all the pages, but what I see over here, advertisement. So right mouse click copy paste. I've pasted everything 
And then I can go um, over here again, take a look at things that I might like. And I can make it sticky, as you see. So in order to do that, I click over here and I enable the sticky sidebar. Update. Let's take a look. Okay, I need to configure those, but let me scroll down. That goes, it sticks with us. This is not a complete Elementor tutorial. If you want to follow that one, you can go to YouTube, search for Elementor tutorial 30. There you go, 90 minutes, but um, if you want to adjust things, click here and go to advanced. Uncheck this and then you can change the margin so you can bring things closer to each other. So over here, as I said, you can change the content and a little bit of the style. At the style, you can adjust more things. In this case, the title typography and the meta typography. And then at advanced, you can have margin. You can change the width so you can make it um, 50%. You can use motion effects, so uh, I can let it fade in. From the left, in a slow way, with a delay of one second. I can transform things, so I can rotate things. And when people hover over it, I can adjust the value. Uh, a lot of things which I do not use. Also the motion effects. Um, when have you seen uh, a news website with an animation like that? I want my website to be functional. It looks great, but all those uh, animations, it's not necessary. I can change the background. So uh, I can make the background black. And then when I go to the layout, to the padding and I increase it, then you see the background of this particular element. Again, if you don't want things, command or control Z. And then it will think, bring things back. I can give things a border. Solid. With a radius. Let's stay in the style of the website. But um, again, I... I do not often come here to change the border or the background or create a mask. And if I do not want to display this on a phone, I go to responsive and I can say hide it on a mobile. And then when I take a look at the responsive mode and I go for the phone, this means that it will not be displayed on a phone. And so we can Take a look at the website on a mobile. And also here, if I don't want to have the sidebar on the phone, I click over here, I go to advanced, responsive, hide it on the phone. And now when I go to the mobile version, the whole sidebar is gone. Bring it back. So you're free to do whatever you want. Uh, I've shown you how to create things over here. Just drag it in. You can also click over here, create multiple columns. And then at the left, I want to show a slider. And at the right, I want to add a module. And again, I can play with the offset over here at the content filter.
And in between, I can place those ads. So I can also duplicate it, select it, go to the navigator, and I drag it here below, or even a different section. So it will appear over here. And all the settings are still uh, the same. And I can also replace all those advertisement codes with AdSense code and then automatically the right advertisement will be shown in front of the right people. So they will have a bigger chance of clicking, which will generate you more revenue. There are two ways to create a sidebar. The first one is using Elementor. You can drag elements into your sidebar area, make the sidebar sticky, and that is your sidebar. Or we can use the sidebar that comes with the Genius theme and with WordPress. Well, right now I will show you how to create a sidebar with elements using Elementor. So this is what I've created, but feel free to create anything you have in mind. And what I want to do, I want to take a look at the sidebar. Right now I actually selected one big sidebar element. I don't want that, so I remove this. Then I go to all the elements and then I want to go for one of the modules. For instance, uh, module 21. And then I want to select one other uh, other style it can be anything like this and i want to show how many posts 30. then i can go back then i can go to the elements i can also search for widgets so if i know of a widget add and drag it over here and it is an uh, image I edit, insert, and again, I can have a, a link over here. We'll take a look at the, the sidebar later. What I want to do, maybe it's still the case, I want it to be sticky. Update, let's take a look. Now it sticks with us until this point. Okay. I'm happy. Command Control Tab and then Command or Control W to close everything. So that's how you can create the home page. Okay, a few more things I want to show you if I scroll down. What I see over here, a lot of information. And I'm like, hey, how can I get rid of this? Because over here, I see it but I cannot adjust it. In order to do that, I need to edit the page. So not edit with Elementor, but edit the page. Then I scroll down below this area and then it says Genius page loop. If I turn this off, my update page, preview this in a new tab, it is gone. I want to get rid of this area. Okay, update, let's see how it looks, better. One of the most important aspects of your website is the content you create. It can be a review, it can be a blog post, a news item, an article, content is king. It still is, it's really important, content, everything on the internet is content. So it's really important to create high quality content. You're not the only one creating content. So your content needs to stand out. And that's what I will focus on. I will show you why and how you need to create high quality blog posts. And then I will show you what you can do with your blog post using the Genius theme. And I think when I show you that, you will understand why I love this theme so much and why I think it's the best theme for creating news websites or blog websites. So let's get right to it. When I take a look at our website, I see two things. Guess what I see? Well, let me show you. The first thing I see is advertisements so over here, 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 and here. The second thing I see is blog posts over here, over here, here, here. Blog posts or news items, however you want to call them, and it can be reviews, it can be videos. 
So the majority of our website is made of blog posts or news items. So what I want to do now, I want to take a look at how we can create one. And if I take a look at the blog post, this one, for instance, the JNews theme gives us a lot of extra functionalities. We don't see them all right now. We have a title, a subtitle, the author, the date, the categories, the amount of comments, the featured image. We can share this. We can uh, show how many times it's viewed or shared. We have more sharing options. Then here's the written text. And in the text, we can have advertisements. We can have headers. We can have images, quotes, make text bold, link to other pages or external pages. We can have reviews. So we can give this a score, the pros and the cons, the review breakdown, give everything a score. We can add the text, place advertisements below every blog post, show the previous blog post, show something about the author and leave a reply. And we can add so much more. So what I want to do now, I want to show you how to create a post using the Genius theme. Well, if I show you from scratch how to create a blog post, how to find the right subject, how to write, how to learn, how to become a better writer, how to add categories, tags, featured images, optimize your website for the search engines, do market research, then this tutorial will become six hours. I don't want that, but I have a tutorial about all those subjects. Just search for how to create a blog post 30 on the internet. And then don't take this one. But the, the new one, look at this two hours full with information on how to do market research, keyword research, use a refs, the keyword explorer, blog post creation, internal linking, free plugins to make your blog post better, how to improve your writing skills, add images to your blog post, Google analytics, Google search console and optimize your blog post for Google. So if you want to watch that or this tutorial and then the blog post we're going to create, I will implement it into my current website and then I will show you how you can make it better with JNews theme. So I hover over new, I click on post and I will add the information from the blog post that I created in the tutorial I just showed you. So I have all the information over here and the blog title, it's a convert kit review. I click on publish and publish and out of the box without adjusting anything, just uh, having the text over here. This is how it looks. You see jnewstutorial.com forward slash convert case review, which is really nice. It's good for the Google search results. By default, we see the title, the author, no category yet, no comments, no views, no shares, and then the title. And what we see over here, an advertisement is automatically placed within the content, which I really like because in the end of the day, we all would like to make some money with our blog posts or our news website. So if you ask me, it's beautifully displayed. There's no featured image yet, but we're going to talk about all those things. It's a long blog post and below the blog post, there is an advertisement. Over here, I have the pros and cons. I will show you how you can make this look so much better. We can go to the previous post. There's an author box. So let's spice this up. I go to the back end, close this. I want to go through these settings. The template is the default template. I can change the permalink, but I like ConvertKit review and then I can add a Category, I can choose one which is already there. Review, but I want to add another one. So I add a new, re uh, a new category and I call this one email marketing. Or what I can do, online marketing, add, and then email marketing as a child of online marketing. I add it. I can add tags. Tags are just keywords that are dominantly present in this blog post. So obviously ConvertKit, email marketing, online marketing, list building. So any word you can find that's relevant, you can add it over here. So I can go through the blog post, ConvertKit, rising, ConvertKit, 
versus MailChimp. Great. Then I can have my featured image. Upload files, select files. There's this file, really big, 1.2 megabytes. So I prefer to go to tinypng.com. Upload it. Make it smaller. And then drag it over here. Now it's only 145 kilobytes. Thanks to tinypng. I can have an export, which is a small uh, portion of text about the tool. And I like to add this one, the first paragraph. In discussion, I leave it as this. Discussion, people can leave a comment and allow pingbacks and trackbacks. Okay. Update. So if I refresh this, we see home, online marketing, email marketing, email marketing, online marketing, review. So if on my homepage, there is a portion or an area that only shows the latest reviews, I think this one only shows reviews, then I see it over here. And I can click on it. And then I go there. We'll talk about the sidebar later, by the way. So I'm happy with how everything looks. And I always create my blog posts using the, the WordPress blog builder. It's the best tool to create blog posts, in my opinion, better than Elementor. Divi, whatever builder you can use. So let's take a look at this area. This is a review. So if we go to the back end, we can go to Genius and then install plugin. The Genius theme comes with a lot of plugins. As you see the visual composer, uh, it's not installed because we don't use it. Elementor, we use it. So it's installed. We can deactivate it and you see all those areas over here. So we can have a breadcrumb, which is what we see over here. So if I would deactivate it, where is it? The breadcrumb. Well, let's do it. Deactivate. And I refresh the page. It's gone. So there are a lot of small plugins you can add to your website. And what I suggest you do is remove the plugins you don't need. If you don't use the breadcrumb, do not activate it because it can slow down your website when you have tons of unnecessary plugins in your website. I activate it because I want to use it. I like the navigation. We have the view counter, which you see over here. Social share is what you see over here. So let me show you again. If I would deactivate social share and I refresh the page, it is gone. So let's bring it back social share. And if you're not sure you're using or not using a plugin, then I would keep it installed so I can search for review and I see it's activated. I can also take a look over here at all the activated ones. And for instance, the weather, I do not use it. So I deactivate it. I don't use the gallery. I deactivate it. Just make sure to check your website. As far as I'm concerned, I do not use a gallery. So it's okay to deactivate that social login. No, thank you. And Genius Split, I will use it in a minute or later in the tutorial, so I will keep it on. So keep that in mind. Don't use a lot of unnecessary plugins. Then I edit my post again. What we have seen is that the review plugin is activated. So below the blog post, I need to scroll down all the way. I can change my social meta information. So let me preview this in a new tab. Get rid of this. A new tab. I can copy this. And if I go to Facebook and I paste this, I see the featured image. I see the link, the title, what is ConvertKit. It's an email marketing tool. So if I want to rewrite that, because right now, what is convert kit convert kit it, it just sound it sounds weird i can rewrite this and i can say what is convert kit convert kit is an email marketing tool i can change the title so um 
it says ConvertKit review. I can say in depth ConvertKit review and comparison. I can change the image I use, but I like that one. And the same I can do with um, Twitter. So I can copy, paste it, copy and paste it. If I update it, I'm not sure if directly the new information will be fetched, but let's try it. Facebook. Paste it. No, not yet. So you need to wait for a while and then it will be fetched. Okay. You see a lot of information over here. If I want to keep it organized, I can just click on this arrow. Okay. That was social meta. Here are the review settings. And why do we see that? Because we installed the review plugin. So I enable the review and the review type. How do I want to display things? I can do percentage, points, stars. Well, I like points. Okay. The review product name, convert kit review. I can have a summary. So that's my summary of the review. I can have a brand name, which of course is convert kit. And then I can go to the second tab. I can work with pros and cons. Well, over here, I have created pros and cons using Gutenberg or the WordPress block editor. So everything that's good, I want to add it over here. Plus the third one. The fourth one. And I can tell you already, it looks quite astonishing or it looks okay. I really like the look. <laughs> I don't want to exaggerate what they say that exaggerate some words are hard for me to pronounce, but I really like how this looks. So what are the cons? The pricing, the price compared to others. So I go to the bed. Lack of documentation. And that's why I created a review about it. Okay. Update. Now let's see what we have so far. I refresh the page, command R or F5 on my PC. I scroll down. So this is made with the, the Gutenberg editor and this is created with Genius, the pros, the cons. Nice. Let's continue to the third tab, the review rating. So I can give every aspect a point. So I can say ease of use for me. It's a nine. It's really straightforward. The second one, pricing. Well, let's say seven. Email opening rate or the conversion rate, nine. Email templates, eight. And the latest one I want to talk about functionalities, also an eight. So, um, okay. Update. And now something else really nice, the product price. So if I go to convert kit pricing, if I pay per month, okay. Let's talk about yearly $9. So where to buy, um, convert kit or get it here or start here. Okay. Let's see what it will do. The price you can start with $9. Don't start with $9. Just fill in the number, the shop link, HTTPS 30 corp.com forward slash convert kit, which is my affiliate link. And then there's shop icon. So what I can do, I can search for convert kit logo images, grab this one, save it. It's not square. Okay. So, 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 okay. Let's take this one better. Then I choose a file. I drag this one over here. And it says it needs to be uh, really small. So I edit the image. I want to change the aspect ratio to one by one. It needs to be, needs to be square. Then I click on 
wrap. Make it a bit smaller and then it's a square. So let's crop this, save it. So now the image is a square, 1301 by 1301. But if I close this, it says as an icon, 16 by 16 will be great. Well, I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I added the image and I want to make it 40, okay, 30 by 30. Scale, great. Back, now I select it. There it goes. Okay, start here or um, up to 300 subscribers. Then I click on the plus. And then I say up to 1000 subscribers. And the price increases to $25 per month. Again, there's a the shop link and the bell. Okay, let's do one more. Up to 3000. Up to 3000 subscribers is $41 per month. And maybe think $41 per month, that's a lot of money, but you can also make a lot of money with your email list. It's crazy. Uh, if you want to know that, read it in the blog post. Update. So those were all the tabs of the review. And what you see, every plugin has their own settings. So I think this, this is doing an amazing job. And if you don't need it, just remove that plugin. So I refresh the page and this is the final result. The review, convert kit review, convert kit. Uh, the summary of the review, the score, the pros and the cons, which have nothing to do with the score, but the score is based on this ease of use pricing. Okay. So what I prefer to do, that's just how I roll. It's not necessary, but if you want to go to the rating, you can start with the highest ones. And end with the lowest ones. So seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. Update, refresh. Now it looks like that. Ease of use, email opening rate, email templates, functionalities, and pricing. And look at this. Below that, the deals. Best price, $9. If I click on it, I go in a new tab to convert it with my affiliate link. And now when people buy this, I make money man the power of affiliate marketing by the way <laughs> if you go to youtube and you search for affiliate marketing 30 i have a six hour course about it another one on how to do specifically uh, create a website man so much value value it's a hard word for me to say the tags the advertisement and if i would click on the tag convert kit i see all the blog posts that have the tag convert kit. So right now it's only one. And I see the sidebar and I can change the sidebar for all the pages, all the blog posts. We'll talk about it later. I, I like the animation over here. I can change the colors. We're going to talk about colors later in the tutorial. We can change all the red colors to the color you have in mind. If I scroll up the first paragraph, convert kit review deals. Okay, the text is too long. Subs. And that's how I make websites. I see something, I try something, it does not work out. And now it does. So when people click here, they go to my affiliate link. They can go to my advertisement. They can go to this advertisement. And the longer they are on my website, the better I will be found in Google because the longer people are on my website, the more people are interested and the more tells Google about my website. Great. So far, so good. What else can we do? Uh, right now, if I scroll up, I can also do page up. Um, 
I see the amount of views, the amount of shares. If I share this on Facebook, I can place it in my feed, my story, say something about it and then post it. That's how easy it is. Same with Twitter. But um, I can also lie. Um, I leave that up to you if you want to do that. I can override the counter settings. So I can say this blog post is viewed like a gazillion times. And it's shared already 72 times. And it's liked by 245 people. And disliked by 12 people. Now if I update it, I refresh the page. And now it looks like this. It, it looks impressive. It's not true. I leave it up to you if you want to use it. No, I will leave it up to me. You cannot use it. Okay, it was a really stupid joke. Update. Oh, split post. Okay. Oh man, it's a whole new chapter on its own. So let me introduce it. One way of getting more revenue from your website is using split posts. Let me talk to you about what they are and how you can apply them in your website using the Genius theme. Okay, let me close this and close this. I enable split post and why would you do that because now people need to click on your website in order to go to the next part of the post not in all cases let me walk you through it so i activated it and what do i want to split so over here this is h2 this is an h2 h2 h3 i want to split everything with an h2 header so every time there's an h2 header in my blog post a new area starts in the blog post. So H2, that's great. Split heading, numbering, ascending, and a load mode for the post split. It can be normal, it can be load all content at once, or lo load content with Ajax, Ajax. Okay, let me update it and show you what happens now. Refresh. Okay, so jump to section. What is ConvertKit? I can go to ConvertKit pricing. And then I go to another page. And you see that over here, it's a new page. So every page is quite short. It's like a heading and then some text. Then I can go to the next part. Okay. I don't like this way of displaying things, but what happens, uh, it can give you more Add revenue if you display things like this. Sometimes you go to a website like the 20 most plastic surgery celebrities and they show you a, uh, a clickbait and then you click on it and then you need to go through all of them to see the one you saw in the thumbnail. And every time you click, you see new advertisements and stuff. All those pages are loaded with advertisements. So that's a great way to re uh, maximize revenue, but I don't like this way. So I can go to template two. Update, refresh. It looks a little bit different. And it, it shows a little bit over here how it looks. So here you see with a line, a line on top of the header. I can have a number over here or a bullet point. So let me refresh this. I start with what is ConvertKit? Start with ConvertKit for free. So I see the whole post, but it's uh, split it into numbers. Okay, let's go to this one. Update, refresh, seven, six, five, four. Okay, this one, this is based on the image. So all the images, have a number to it or a, a chapter. And when I go to the right, I go to the next area. So you can go through all of them, see the ones uh, you prefer. And then there are more options. Let me show you in a minute. There's also an option. So I bring it back. I scroll down and I can change the load mode. I can say load all content, update. That means if I uh, refresh the page or I go to the original blog post URL, which is this one, 
I can go to the second one and it's there immediately. It doesn't have to be loaded. It's loaded already. That's so much better than what we had because uh, when I did this one, you scroll up really weird and then it changes. It's weird. So never use a normal load or load all content or load with Ajax. And that means that a certain part, only that part in the website will be reloaded. Not this part, not the header. So let me bring this back to original blog post URL. I go to six and it's also really fast. 11 is there immediately. So I choose Ajax or load all content and then there can be a featured image. If I go back to the, the styles or the templates um, and I go to template six, look, there's an extra option now, table of contents. If I activate it, it shows uh, normal. So if I update the page, and I view the blog post. Below the featured image is a table of contents. So every H2 will mean there's a new paragraph. So I go to the free 14 day trial and there I go. And also here I see the deal, really nice. I can also make it float or do both. So it will appear over here. I personally do not like it because it's overlapping the content. Uh, what I don't like is that this thing will appear everywhere. It comes across really spammy. So if I don't want that, I should take a look at a different template that maintains the content, a table of contents. So refresh. What I don't like is that this will be shown everywhere. And why is that? Because normally this would go to a new page. So four would go to a new page, five would go to a new page, six. And that's why you see it, you see it for every first paragraph of new page. So um, if you don't use the table of contents, I would definitely go with another one, update, and then it will be shown here. Then I go to the next one. And then it will be shown here. So that's how it works. And the great thing is, look at this, those views. Wow. Those go like, these go like crazy. So this is a great uh, feature if you want to have the top 10 WordPress plugins or the top 10 most handsome people from the Netherlands. And by the way, if you use my image, please ask for permission. I'm serious. I, 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 I see it all the time. I see myself on the internet and top 10 list and it's, it's hard, you know, being so good looking and um, people think, oh, I want to be good looking. But when you are, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard. Sometimes I think that of, of handsome people like, oh, we will, we want to be handsome. But when you have that, there are also more temptations maybe. Okay. Another subject for another YouTube channel that I will probably never create. Let's continue with this tutorial. This was a split testing and then I want to collapse it because I want to keep things organized. And since I use the, the review settings, I can get rid of this block or table. Okay. Then there are the single post settings. So let me get rid of this right now. There's the convert kit review. And then over here I can say, is this the best email marketing tool for you. Update, refresh. There it goes. The post format type. It can be video, it can be gallery. So if I would have a tutorial, okay, let's go to YouTube. Search for convert kit. Tutorial. I have the best tutorial about ConvertKit on the internet and it's still not number one. It's such, such an in-depth tutorial, not a lot of views and hey, it's just the way it is. Sometimes it's range on your crop. Okay. <laughs> that was a weird thing, but hey, I can make this a video and the video format, insert a video URL, the source name. If I have a um, guest blog post from Reddit. 
I can say um, okay, reddit.com. Let's say if Reddit has something to say about convert kit. Maybe it's really stupid, but I don't actually get Reddit. I don't use it. Uh, it seems to be quite a thing. So I can send people to the original link. And it is from Josh James. Josh. James.com update refresh and over here I see the video uh, I still use the split testing I see oh that's okay because now I can see the source via Josh James if I click on it I go to Josh James.com I already thought there must be someone in the world with a domain Josh James so Override default template. We're going to talk about the, the default template later. Override the image thumbnail size. So uh, the image over here, in this case, it's a, it's a video. Trending post. So I can make this a trending post and I can uh, place it in line of the post meta or above the post title. And then it looks like this. Brace yourself for this one. Bomb. Wow, now everybody wants to read it. Is it a sponsored post? If it is, I can say this uh, is sponsored by Josh James. Josh. Or better, um, an affiliate link, ferdycorp.com forward slash convert kit. I can show the sponsor logo. Description. Thank you, Ferdy, for this guest post. Update. And then here on top, it says it's sponsored by ConvertKit. Thank you, Ferdy, for this guest post. I can uh, say something about the company. They want to wait. I don't know. And then there's the ad option. I can disable ads. Of course, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Why on earth would I disable ads? Let's take a look at my Google Ads revenue. No, let's not. Let's not. Ferdy, you should not, not say things like that. So, um, yeah, that's what you can do. There's more you can do. Uh, one of the things I can do is turn this off. So this is how our blog post looks. Convert kit review. Sponsored title, subtitle by Freddy Korpshoek. No comments, a video. And all this stuff over here, the content made with Gutenberg or the blog editor. Then there's the review. The source, advertisement, previous post. And then over here is this area. Let's take a look at this area because I want to cover all the important parts. And while I was saying that, I was doing things and not telling you what I was doing. So I am a user, Ferdy Korpsuk. Over here, I can edit my profile. I hold command or control to open it in a new tab. And then I have my display main publicity, which is shown as Ferdy Korpsuk. That's what I like. And then I can have a website, HTTPS Ferdy Korpsuk. .com. Facebook. I can have a LinkedIn. So what do I want to share on this website? Let's do the latest one, um, Instagram. And then I can say something about myself. Something like that. I am married with Anna and we have two children. Three and zero. Okay, update profile. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I refresh this, it looks better. If I take a look at Gravatar, 
it's linked with my email account. So I can change my profile picture over here, sign in, and now my uh, account has been blocked. Okay, no problem. I cannot change this image anymore. And now when I go to Instagram, look at how active I am. Oh, you don't see that, but this one is uh, a few months ago. I used to be a singer. I used to be a little bit thinner. So uh, yeah. When people leave a reply, whoa, such an in-depth review. Thank you. Post comment. I don't see any other information because I'm logged in. But if people would um, check this as an incognito person, so they're not logged in. They can scroll down, page down, and then they can uh, leave a comment and their name. Whoa. George Russell. George Russell ninth at gmail.com George Russell.com post comment now when I refresh this as a logged in user I can click over here and I can approve this I can say that was exactly I thought when I wrote this reply and now when I go to the blog post this is how it looks I think it looks great and if George Russell the ninth has uh, his account linked with Gravatar I'll see an image over here I can edit things I can even edit his message Ferdy, you, you look so good. So I can manipulate things, say that I have tons of fake views over here. Over here, so many shares. And then um, that can improve my sales. But I rather do not do that like that. But hey, that is up to you. And now at our homepage, it appears over here with our thumbnail, uh, this icon because it's a video or it contains a video. And then again, if I go to this page and edit it with Elementor, I can change the style to something else. Update. And I think you are doing an amazing job on this. Has everything to do with the review so man and, and oh man i i'm excited about this uh, amazing theme it makes things easier for you so we have created our home page and uh, i showed you in the tutorial how you can create this blog post or blog post like this and i showed you what you can do with jnews in order to give it extra functionalities Now it's a matter of creating a lot of content, adding a lot of value to your website. And the longer people will stay on your website, the better you will be found. Are you still having fun? Are you learning new things? I hope so. If this video is valuable for you, please like it. It will mean a lot to me and it's totally free to do it. Below the video, you can hit thumbs up and um, that will mean a lot to me. So right now. We're going to talk about the customizer options. There are a lot of customizer options and it can be that the next part of this tutorial can look a little bit boring. Maybe it is, but I want to show you what is possible with, with the fonts, with the colors, with the style of your website. So I will walk you through the customizer options. And after that, you can say, yes, I've been through this part of the tutorial. So good luck. Maybe you should grab some popcorn, nice drink. And just follow along. Yeah. Okay, let's dive right into the customizer. Okay, I will just leave it in the video just because. Let's take a look at the customizer. There are so many things we can customize. And in order to do that, we need to go to the customizer over here. So I click there. And you see there are quite a lot of options. Everything with icon is JNews related and all the other ones are settings that are general settings from WordPress itself. 
So site identity, we can change the site title on the tagline. We did that already. We can change the icon. Right now we see this one. We'll talk about it later. Here you can change it. We can adjust the menus, widgets, and homepage settings. Here we can select which homepage we want to have. So I can select a different homepage. And then it looks like that. I selected the, the homepage one, the one we have created. And if you want to, you can create a, a new page called blog or news. And that can be the page that will showcase all your news items or all your blog posts. Well, I work with categories, so I don't need that. I go back, I click on publish. Later in the tutorial, we'll change the logo and the fav icon. Right now, I want to talk about all the JNews options. So first I go to layout colors and scheme. Click on it. There's the layout and background. And in order to showcase this, I want to make the website a bit smaller. I can do that by clicking on control or command minus. So I can make this a boxed layout by clicking here. The only difference you see is this area. Right now it's full width and also here. All right now it isn't. Uh, if I change the background, you see it better. Now it looks like this. We can also have a background image. So if I select this one, I choose this image. It looks like this. It repeats itself so we can configure it a bit more. Do I want the background to be uh, on repeat? No, no repeat. The position, uh, left, top is fine. The position, I leave it by default. And then the attachment right now, it's not fixed. I want it to be fixed so I can click here and make it fixed. And now it looks like that. And then I can make it inherit or cover. That's what I prefer. Great. I click on publish. Then I go to my blog post. And if I would remove this and I will use a white background, I can go to the box container. And if I turn this on, look at this. Let me publish it. I don't see the results. So what I will do, I will go to the website, copy, paste it. And I go to the most recent blog post. Now I have this line over here and over here, over every widget. I like it, but you also can choose to have a shadow. And if I publish it and I refresh the page, it's a little bit softer. And if you like that, you can use that. Well, let me keep it for a moment because I want to show you how you can um, combine this with a different background in this area. Here it is, the container background. So if I would make this uh, purple, then you always see which area is affected. Well, that's very clear. So what I could do, I could make this slightly darker like that. And then over here, I can overwrite the container width. So I can make the website uh, wider on a laptop with a box container, on a desktop with a box container. So if I would make this wider, you will see it over here, it becomes wider. And then I can also change the width of the container. Like that. If I don't like it, I click over here. I can discard the changes. And it will be to the latest settings before I publish it. So let me go back. That's what we have we've discussed. I will turn this off. And then we can go to the side feed settings. Keep in mind that I made my website a bit smaller. That's still the case. If I enable a side feed, look at this, an area here at the left appears. So I publish it. Let me refresh the website. So I have my website. It's beautifully in the center. And here at the left, no matter where I am, I see this overview and I can navigate to the, to the latest blog post. So I click here and here it loads. It can be really nice if you want this, especially when uh, with those screens these days, because there's still space over here. But, um, it can also look a little bit crowded depending on what kind of computer screen your user uses. I can enable a sidebar as a side feed. So I can say yes. And then I can select a sidebar. You see the sidebar over here, which we created. We can select footer sidebars. We're going to talk about the, the footer later. And I can also change the background of this area. And again, if you make it purple, you know which area is affected. So let me bring it back to default and I want to turn this off. I personally, uh, I like the ID of the most recent post. 
but um, I turn it off. But it's nice that it's an option. I go back to the scheme and website colors. Right now, red is the color in our website. I can change that. So the text color is okay with me. Hey, again. Okay, that area is affected. Clear. Bring it back to default. And then I like the accent color to be blue. And then the alternate alternate color is orange, not like that. More like that. I copy this because every link in the website I want it to be orange. So I paste it and the entry content color. Again, make it purple if you want to know what I mean. It's not applicable over here. Or it's not, well, it's not used over here. I leave it as it is. If I want to, I can make all the links uh, have an underline. I don't want that. And the heading color, that's this one. Make it purple if you want. Or orange. Or blue. Or default, which I prefer. Go back, mobile browse color. So if you go to the mobile settings or the mobile view, you can change the background color. And I see nothing is affected over here. So um, I bring it back to default. Go back, go back, bring it back to the normal screen. And those were the JNews layout color and scheme settings. Okay, then we have the header options, which is this area and the footer options which is this area, uh, since that uh, deserves some more attention, I will use it for later. And it takes a little bit longer to configure this. So uh, we'll come back to this. Let's go to the single post options. For that, I want to go to single post. Also over here, let me go to convert kit review. Refresh. It seems that I've not turned this off. So um, wait. Let's go back to the, this area, side feed. It's turned off. Let me publish it. Refresh. Better. I want to get rid of this. Edit post. Sponsored. Nope. And the general settings. I don't want to have a subtitle update. Preview in a new tab. Get rid of this. Better. Okay. Let's go back to the single post options. And there are a lot of settings. So first, the breadcrumb, I can turn this off. And I can decide where I want to display this. So if I don't want to display this in the category page, turn it off. Or the search page, I turn it off. Well, I turn it on. I want people to know where they are. Where they are, I go back and then the single post options. Right now it's displayed like this. We have the main area and then the sidebar. I can also say the title should be full width. And then below the sidebar starts. Man, there are so many options. I like this one, template six. It shows the, the featured image in the background. The only weird thing is that this uh, trending thing is out of place. But I like this one. So if you want to use this one, by all means, go ahead. I use a video over here, so I can also use template eight. And then below that, you see the title. So first there's the video. Well, I choose template one. And if you want to, you can also create something custom in Elementor. We'll talk about it later. But I like uh, this option. Then over here, the single block post layout. Right now, this is the width. If I want to make it wider and make this smaller, I can choose the white variation. So the sidebar is a little bit smaller. And if you like that, you can use it. You can also use two right sidebars. And then of course, select a different one. Uh, a sidebar at the left and a sidebar at the right. That was really cool in 2004. I can also use the, the narrow blog post. So there are no distractions, only the blog post. Also nice. And again, I choose for option one. And then per option, there are settings. Which sidebar do I want to show? Do I want the sidebar to be sticky? 
Yes. We'll talk about the sidebar later. There's so many things we can talk about. So do I want to show the featured image or a video? If I turn this off, I publish it and I refresh the page, it will be gone. The video or the featured image. I turn it on and I leave everything on. Do I want to show the post metadata? All this stuff over here. Yes. If we take a look at the publish date, what I also can do, I can change the post date format to relative. So it says it's 14 hours ago. If you have a lot of blog posts or news items, I think this is interesting. So I leave it like that. Do I want to show the categories over here? The comment button. The show reading time. That's something interesting. Look at this. 10 minutes. You can also change the amount of words people should read per minute. So I read around 240 uh, words per minute. And then my reading time is 30 minutes. So uh, great. I can have a zoom button. That means that people can make the text smaller or bigger. So let me refresh this. I can click over here, make it bigger. If people want to do that, yes, I think it's a good option. So, um, and then here I can change the increase. Do I want people to share this? Yes. The view counter, yes. The, the post tag, well, that's below the post. Over here, yes. The previous and next one. Uh, I don't want to have a pop up. To be honest, I don't see it also. And I can show a reading progress bar, which is nice in my opinion. I want to place it at the bottom and I can change the color. Let's use the orange color again. So let me um, go back to the color settings. Copy it. Go back to the single post. Single post option. Scroll down all the way. And there. Paste it. Now if I publish it and I Refresh the website. At the bottom, I will see a progress bar. There it is. A lot of nice options. Th uh, single thumbnail settings. Yeah, I leave it as it is. This is all fine. So I go back to the related post options and this looks really nice. Um, the previous post is over here, but I prefer to show related posts. And if I do that, then I can go back to the single post options and I don't need to have the previous post. So um, let me see this one. I turn it off. Now you see this over here, the related post that looks so much better in my opinion. And then we can um, adjust it. So based on the category related categories, we can show things. Also here we can change the look and feel. And that has a lot to do uh, with this title actually. Only the header. So I like uh, the style eight or six. No pagination. I will prefer to show three related posts instead of six. And also here I can change how it looks, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with uh, how it looks right now. Module 22 is the best one in my opinion. The excerpt word length, let's say zero. I don't want to have any text over here, only the title. And over here, I can have inline posts related. So within my post, somewhere in the blog post, I can have related blog posts. Well, it doesn't look that appealing. So I rather do not use that. This is how it looks related post. So oh, thank you. Publish, go back, comment settings. Right now we have a, a WordPress comments. I can also change it to discuss or to Facebook comments and for that. I need to get my Facebook app ID and this is a great way to get more eyeballs on your blog post through Facebook because when people respond, that will be seen on their Facebook profile. I go with the WordPress comments and then we can have a mobile truncate. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but uh, that means that there's a read more button 
when you start reading the blog post. So continue reading. If I turn this off, it's gone. So uh, in the following video, if you use a YouTube video or a video, and if you scroll down, should this video stick with you here at the right top or somewhere else? And how much pixels from the top should it be? So if I publish it and I refresh the page, if I scroll down, look at this. On this moment, bam, there it is. And uh, for this website, I don't like it, but it's a possibility. Okay, then we have the image and gallery options. I personally do not use an image and gallery. And I don't want this tutorial to be too long. I really want to cover everything, but this, I don't know. I feel like um, galleries are more of the best. So what you can do, you can go to jnews.io.com. Then click somewhere in, on the page and then page down. <whistles> go to the documentation. Go to the general guidelines. Uh, excuse me, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, customize options and then image and gallery options. So if you have one, a gallery or an image here at this place, what you can do. And the same goes for other options of which I do not uh, use. You can go to uh, jnews.io and follow along. So I do want to talk about social like and view. Okay, before we talk about this, let me go back to the website. To the back end right now i don't see likes and dislikes i want to add that i go to the back end to genius install plugins and over here i search for like install and then activate and i close this and i hold command or control click over here drag it to the left go to social like and view and now there it is okay Look at this, the social bar view and like. I make use of the Genius view counter. So we see how many uh, views we have on this blog post. And then over here, I see share on Facebook, share on Twitter. Let me show it over here. And then I can click over here and then there are more options. Well, I don't like it. So what I can also do, uh, oh, first of all, I don't need Google Plus because it doesn't exist. So I delete it. I like uh, Facebook, share on Facebook, share on Twitter. I can say share on, on LinkedIn. And that's it for me. I don't need this icon. So I can go to the secondary share options or network and remove it because otherwise people need to click an extra time. So be can share this on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. If I add a new one over here, then it will open in a new row. Unless I do not add text, but if I say share on what's up, it goes to a new line. So I can remove the text and add a few more icons. So for instance, email without adding any text. It's also pretty straightforward. But I prefer um, just to use three of them. Great. Share bar setting details. So I can say that share should only be shown when there are more than 12, for instance. So it's uh, zero, so it will not be shown. I can link my Twitter account at 30 Corper or only this one. My Facebook app ID, app secret and access token in order to link it with my account. It's not necessary. The initial view card is initial <laughs> initial view count. I can say that by default, there are already 130 views and everything else is just a bonus. And then I can say the social share value based on views. So the amount of shares are based on the amount of views. And then I can say that every 10th person, one in 10 people is sharing it. So 228, 23 shares. And since 23 is higher than 12, it is displaying over here. So it's actually a little bit of cheating. And also the same can be done with likes over here. So you can manipulate the numbers. So publish, go back, and there's a social icon. 
um, if we have that over here somewhere in our menu, which one do I want to show? And then you can add your own link, of course, Twitter. Uh, no Google Plus anymore. I think also below they're shown. Yeah, over here. So Twitter, YouTube. I always have the S over here. And that's probably Pinterest or RSS. Um, let's go for Pinterest. And I publish it. So wherever you display your social icons, those will appear. Select and share. I leave it on. The social meta settings. I leave it as it is. And the like button settings. So I can say that I only want to show the likes. But I also want to show this, the dislikes. But hey, you can choose what you want to do over here. Great. The search options, the search content only show, only show the search posts. So no pages. That's what I want. And the live search. That's really nice. So if I search for something convert, you see results over here. How many results do I want to see? Now I see six, but I think uh, three is okay. Go back, go back. The category template, we can uh, create a template. So if I go to a certain category, entertainment, how should it be displayed? Great. Now, maybe you think, huh? there's a right sidebar. Where is it? Well, it's about the area below. So if I say left sidebar, this area will change, not the area above. So I like it the way it is. Do I want to have the default sidebar or a specific one? Do I want to have a sticky sidebar? Yes, it is sticky. How do I want to display this? I can also display it like this. Also here it will be shown. I think that is better. Or the dark version. And I can change the style. And then I would like to have a darker background. Like that. Or an image in the background. Do I want to have this block or not? And if so, I prefer to have one. How do I want to display this? And I like this more. Again, a lot of options. Also this one. Oh, wow. Wow. We can have those beautiful colors, but it's not in the style of our website. This is okay. The hero margin, how much space do I want to have? It's okay. The date format is also fine. In this area, for me, it's also fine. Although, wasn't module 22 a nice one? Um, well, for this particular case, that one. I don't know, but this makes me happy. <laughs> I can make this uh, boxed, change the excerpt length, which is 20 right now, make the date relative. So one month ago, can change the pagination mode. Change the alignment of the pagination and uh, everything is fine for me. Okay, there are also other templates, uh, the index template. And if I want to know uh, which page this is, I just have to click on the page layout and then says, hey, right now, nothing will be affected here. Go to that particular page. I wonder which page it is. Oh, is this the loop maybe? So I can bring this back to the right and then show a different sidebar if I want to. I can make it sticky. Again, I can display this a different way. And I, like, I actually like it the way it is. Publish. Then I can go back 
to the archive template. Again, I click somewhere. I will be brought to that page. And again, I want this to be at the left. So this is for the, the, when you type in a tag, this is the tag and every blog post with that tag will be displayed. And again, I like the display. So I can choose to have the same one everywhere. Let's say module three. And if I go back to the index, I can also say module three. So they all have the same area, the search template. So if I search for something on VertKit, now I go directly to the blog post. But if I would say convert kit and I view all the results, now I go to the search template. So again, I can change how it looks and I like module three. And if I change it, it will be bigger. The author template. So if I click here and I go to the author template. I see some text about myself and again, the same cyber at the right and the module three at the left. The attachment template. Let's go there. Bring back to the right. And it's okay. Yes, it is. When I type in the URL that does not exist. This is how it looks page not found. And for this one, I don't want to have a sidebar. So, so what I can do, I can make this, um, full width and then below I can display it like this, but for this one, I want to have something different. How about this one? A bit bigger. Yeah. So those are the other templates. I publish it. And now when I go to a link that does not exist, it looks like this. And when I go to me as an author, here at the left, I see all the blog posts below each other and right, I see the sidebar we have everywhere. The font options. Let's take a look at the global fonts. The font family, I want it to be um, something else. And if I do that, you see it will change everywhere. Rip eye. Oh, that's what I'm going to eat tonight. I'm going to celebrate my birthday. 36 years with my two best friends. We're going to a beautiful restaurant and we're going to eat rip eye Wagyu. Wagyu rip eye. Yeah. So uh, let's go back to the tutorial. I want to go for open. Open sans as the main font. And we can uh, change the variant, uh, change the color. Purple. And then you see which part is affected. Clear. The header font. I like to use new Mito. Personally, as you see over here. Maybe for a news website, you want to have something else. You can go to fonts.google.com and then select uh, Serif. That's a lot of uh, used a lot in newspapers. So, um, bitter. Yeah, let's let's have a font called bitter. But it gives a little bit more the, the, the newspaper vibe. Well, I'm not in the newspaper vibe, so I go for Nunito. The main menu, same one. I don't want to use too many fonts for the headers and the titles. I want to use Nunito. And for the fonts itself, I use Open Sans. Paragraph open sounds. So if I go to the homepage or maybe better to blog post, it's important that it's readable, 
Right now it's a bit small. So I can um, change the font size. Let me change the color, see what's happening. Yeah. Maybe I should pixels. Let's say 20. Okay, I like it, but I don't like the line height. This is too much. 1.2, 1.6, 7, and then I clear this area. I can um, make it uh, bold, but I like it the way it is. And if I want to make this bold, I can also do that over here at the um, main menu. I can change the font size, I can change the color, I can change the line height, which it has no lines. So um, I can say extra bold italic, but I don't need it. So I click on publish. Then there's also custom fonts. You can upload one, for instance, WPOFF, TFF, SVG. But I, I for me, the global fonts are enough. Or you go to your type kit font. If you have a subscription at Adobe, you go to fonts.adobe.com. And there you can find a font and then uh, place it into your website. Additional options. Whoa, let's talk about jQuery. No, 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 let's not. The review is in dollars. I can have a price behind the text like dollars. The price floats. Yes. The loader settings. So when I'm loading something for a post split, should I see a dot or a circle? Well, with, with the, the way we load everything, there's no waiting time, so it doesn't matter. The module loader style dot mega menu. So if I hover over here, I wish I had a slower website. <laughs> There should be, there's a circle, you see it's really short. So um, I think a circle everywhere is okay. Keep things uh, the same. Post date by default, I want to use um, the modified date. So if I re-update something, so I create something new, it will show the newest modification date. Do I want to enable the cookie law policy? Yes. And you can change the text in the contact form. The register form. Analytics. Do I want to have Google tracking code over here? If I want that, I turn this on and I place my Google analytics code over here. This one, UA and then number. Do I want to have a custom post type? Well, it can be activated. I don't use it, but hey, you can activate it. Global API key for YouTube or for Twitch or for Facebook. You can add it all over here. Speed optimization. Do I want to optimize the assets? Well, um, be careful with what you do over here. Uh, it can optimize things, but it can also make things worse. What I suggest, just use SiteGround as a web hosting provider or Name Hero, and you should be fine. And I don't use this. I'd rather use uh, SiteGround tools to make my website faster and not the Genius tools. Query options, it's okay. I'm not gonna talk about that. The view calendar settings. Do I want to limit the data? No. The interval, how many times should it be uploaded? I like to have real-time numbers, so I say zero and prevent counting the same visitors. Well, I turn it off because it looks better. When you refresh the page, there is another view. And I want to exclude visitors. You can turn it off and then you see how many views you get from robots. Advertisement options, we're going to talk about it later. Then the global block options, this will be affected when you use the module block widget live search and site feed. So in one of those blocks, you can decide what you want to show. So over here, for instance, if I don't want to show any data, it's not there. 
I can turn it on. And then I can say, I do not want to show the author. I can decide what I do want to show. I like to show the views. Jason, well, this is also not interesting. Just let it be. Okay, we're going to leave the scheme style as it is. And then there's the additional CSS. If you want to add some custom CSS, you can do that over here. Additional JavaScript in the header or in the footer. You can place it over here. Great. So we're going to talk about the header and the footer. Let me close this. And now this is how our website looks. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about the header of your website, which is quite an important part of your website because it is the first thing people will see. So with the Genius themes, Genius theme, not plural, but singular, there are a lot of possibilities. There are uh, templates and then you can configure everything. So I have an idea. How about I show you how you can create a beautiful header in the Genius theme? Let's do that. So it's now two weeks later, even more. This was uh, created July 28th. It's now August 15th. So two and a half weeks uh, I've been on vacation. And now let's continue with this tutorial. We're going to take a look at the header and you can do a lot of things with this header. By the way, this is also part of the header. Maybe you don't see that or I did not see it because this looks very similar. But if I would open this website in an incognito window, this is what we see. The top header, an advertisement, and I can change this with a Google Ads. I'll talk about it later. The logo and the menu, which is a mega menu. And we're going to talk about the mega menu later. And we can have a search bar. So how can we adjust this? We go back to the customizer. By the way, I'm so happy to be back working. I like the vacation, but I feel so much drive to, to make better tutorials and finish this one. So I go to Genius header options and I hope you have some time the next 90 minutes because look at all those options. We're going to walk through them all. No, we're not going to do that. What they do over here, I see header logo. I also see logo over here. Over here, I see dark mode. That's also something I see over here. So we don't have to go through all these options. And I can uh, imagine that you're overwhelmed right now. Like, whoa, what is this? Well, actually, it's all about the first five options. And all those other options are not mandatory. They're only interesting if you are using those elements in your menu. So let's go to the header builder and layout. Right now, it looks like this. We have three bars, the top bar, the main bar, and the bottom bar. That's also what you see over here. And in those areas, we can add stuff. So we're, here we have the top bar menu, and I can also place the date next to it, like that. And by default, it looks beautiful. If you have a web shop, you can have your card details over there, but not only over there, also here. What you see here it is black and here it is white. So automatically the theme is doing a lot of great things for us. But what you also can do, that's maybe a better point to start. Go to the header builder and layout. We can choose one of the layouts. So if I go for this one, you see a header then we see the date, social icons. And that's also what I see over here. So this is a representation of what you see over here. So here we can adjust everything. But I don't want to have weather. So I close it and then it's gone. If I click on the social icon, I can change the background. I can change the icon colors like that to something like this. Beautiful. No, it's not. But I can also go back to the builder and layout. And I think, okay, let's try the second one. I would choose them all or try them all. It's also possible for the third one, the fourth one. And then you can adjust things. I go back to style seven. And as I said, I can click on things and I can change things. So I can uh, upload my own logo. If you have one, change the image, upload files, select files. And over here, I have three logos I want to upload. 
WP News and then I can choose this one and I can choose the image. You don't see any changes yet because we also need to change it for the Retina logo. So over here, I also choose this one. What I see, the logo is quite big. So what I need to do, let me publish this. I go back and I go to the back end of the website. I go to media. This is all for free, what, I, what I'm about to show you. I go to the logo and I see that the width is more than a thousand pixels, which is quite a lot. So I click on edit image and I bring this back to 450. I click on scale and there it goes. Then I go to the white logo, do the same, edit 450 scale. Okay, I go back to the website, to the customizer. Then I go to the header options. I click on the logo. I can bring it back to the default one. As you see, I change the image and now look at this 450, which is better. Like that. And as I showed before, I can remove it, remove it, and select the default one, publish it. Oh, we can change the logo over here. And also when you use a dark area and you want to show the logo uh, with a lighter color, for instance, if you go to the mobile version, now you can change the logo to the white one. So it's best if you have a colored logo and a light logo or a white logo, and then you can display it on areas with a dark background. Let's go back to the normal screen. I go back to the builder layout and I decide to choose style one. But know that everywhere where there is an element, you can adjust the settings. So over here, pop up, expand like this or modal expand like that. So every element has their own options and they adjust the style depending on where you place the element. So now it's dark. There it's white. I don't want to have the weather. I don't want to have a login area. If I want to have it, I can bring it back over here. So here I see all the elements. So I can bring this back. If I go to the advertisement, I can change uh, the way it is displayed. And later in the tutorial, I will show you how to use Google ads for this. So you re can really start to make money by providing high quality news or information through this amazing theme. What else um, over here? There are settings. So right now it's aligned to the left. I can also align it to the center or to the right. And it's growing. So that means it will take up all the space there is over here. I can also display it as normal. And then this gets more space. So if I bring this to the center, it'll be there. If I say grow, and over here, I can make it grow and then it will be in the center. So you can play around with those settings. I like to have this one pushing everything else to the right. So I'm actually happy with the default menu as it is displayed over here. So let's talk about the sticky header. If I scroll down and I scroll up, I see a sticky header over here. Well, if I click over here, it says that the sticky header will only be displayed when I scroll up. If you want this to be displayed always, you can click on always follow. So as soon as I scroll down, it appears. And here you see that this menu is totally different than the normal menu. So I can decide over here how I want to display things. So again, over here, I can bring this to the center or let's say normal. Then I drag the main menu to the center. Then I want to have my logo at the left and the search icon at the right. Or maybe I want to have a call to action at the right. Well, in that case, I can say uh, button one over here. If I click on button one, I can change the text. WordPress course. And I don't want to use a, an icon. 
I can link this to a, a certain area. So 30s WordPress course it's come in the new tab. I can make it round as you see over here. And it's not displayed over here, but when I scroll down, then it appears. If I go to the desktop and the normal header, I can drag button one over here or rather over here. And then this displayed over here. And when I scroll down, how cool is that? I think it's pretty cool. So let me get rid of the button. And now let's take a look at the tablet and the phone. Uh, it is displayed like this, a logo in the center, a dark background and the search area. If I click over here, there's not much I see, but I can uh, create it over here. So here we see the mobile header, the navigation icon, the logo and the search icon. So let's take a look at the navigation icon. I can select the colors. And if I click over here, I can decide what I want to display in the navigation icon. So when I open this, what should be displayed? I have the top content that is in this case, the search form below the menu, which we do not see. And then below, let me make this smaller. We have the social icon and the footer copyright. So if I would get rid of this, I don't see that anymore. If I bring it back, it is there. So I can also, uh, have a language switcher over here, but uh, since we do not have multiple languages, I don't see that. I can have button one for the course and I don't see it yet. So let me publish it. What I want to do, I want to go back and back to the menus and then there's the mobile navigation Now I can add items over here. So I can add the home page. Uh, click over here, I change it to home. I can add more items, uh, for instance, the categories, business, travel, world, but I don't see anything over here. Why? We need to close it and open it in order to see it. So I close this, I customize the website, I go to the header options, tablet, drawer, content. Now if I click over here, there it is. So. We can add account information. That's what you see right away. And everything you see over here can be added over here at the top area or at the bottom area. And then here you can change the background color. We can enable a gradient. We can have an overlay color. We can even have a background image. And then overlay color. And make it a bit more transparent. And then we can go to the style, make it dark. So you see it like that. So quite a lot you can do. But uh, I don't need this. That's the way the cookie crumbles when it comes to the header and the tablet view and the sticky area. I click on publish, close it, and now it looks like this. We did not change a lot of things, but I showed you how you can adjust things to your wishes. I think the JNews theme does a great job by itself, so I leave it as it is. And now let's take a look at the footer of our website. And when we take a look at the footer, it's almost the same as the header. So I go to the customizer. Then there are the footer options, the footer layout. I scroll down right now. It looks like this. I have three areas left, center, right, and then the bottom area. And that's also what you see over here at style one. So I can change it. So now I have four columns, but I don't see the fourth column. Why do I not see that? Well, let me publish it first. Close this. And then go back to the customizer. So now we have four widget areas. We can find them over here at the widgets. One, two, three, four. And in one, I see this. JNews about. 
And then I see the social widget over here. Same goes for widget two, the categories, three, recent news. But with it's widget four, I don't see anything. So I can add a widget and I suggest you use JNews widgets and it can be anything. So let's go for Instagram. Now I need to connect it. So over here it says go to, uh, first I need to install the plugin. So let me close this to the backend Genius install plugins. I search for Instagram install and it's great that you can install all those plugins. Otherwise you would have a really big theme that is quite heavy, but now you don't need to use all the plugins. You just install the ones uh, you need. So I installed it and I activated it. I go back to the customizer. Now it says exactly what I need to do. I need to go to Genius, social like and view, Instagram. I click over here. Now I need to be logged in or I need to log in at Instagram. Then I click on allow. And now if I scroll down, I see my most recent Instagram posts. And if I close this, if I click on them, I see them. This is my son. Look at this. Here he goes. And then he kicks. So be careful in life, children. If I go back and I go back and I go back to the, let me see, the footer options, the layout. I can choose a style or a different style or another style. So take a look at the one you like and then you can adjust it. You can also create one yourself using Elementor, but it's a little bit limited. I think JThemes is doing an amazing job out of the box. I bring it back to three areas. Go back, I can go to the footer options. That is this area. So I can change this. I don't need to promote the theme. So I can get rid of all this stuff over here. And then I can say website made by Ferdy Korpershoek. But I already have those links over here. And if you want to adjust those, I need to adjust that menu. Here we can change the colors. Okay. Publish. Go back. Uh, go back again. Now I can go to the back end to appearance widgets. And then here I see more information. So let me take a look. Okay, let me close this. I need to go to uh, footer widget one about. I see a logo and a text. So there's the logo. So I can adjust everything. And also over here, I can change the look of view. And if I take a look at social icon number five, it's not uh, in use anymore because Google uh, doesn't exist Google Plus anymore. So I delete it, save it, and if I refresh the page, it is gone. So this is the place, or uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm so sorry, Ex excuse me, <laughs> oh, I messed up. <laughs> no, over here, you can adjust everything. So you can adjust things, save it, refresh the page, and it looks like that. I don't like that. Save it. Footer widget three. Let's make it three. And I can change the style. So right now it's two big thumbnails. I uh, can also bring it back to something else. See what happens. So that's how you can adjust or create a footer. Of course, I need to change this text. So I go back to footer one, general, and I change the text. It 
Save it. Refresh. There you go. That's how you create the footer. I showed you how to create the header. I showed you how to create this page. It is time to take a look at the sidebar. We already talked about creating a sidebar using Elementor. And I think that's an amazing feature. But you can also create a sidebar using WordPress and the Genius theme. And the great thing is that with the Genius theme, there are a lot of Genius widgets. So let me show you how to create multiple sidebars for multiple specific pages and show you what kind of widgets you can add to your sidebar. Let's talk about the sidebar over here. We have created a few things ourselves. So this is a sidebar that's created using Elementor. But let me show you how you can create sidebars using WordPress and the Genius theme. So first I go to Elementor, edit with Elementor. And then over here, I see that this is a module. So if I get rid of this, I can also get rid of this. I can search for the sidebar and I drag it over here. And now I can select the sidebar. These are all the sidebars we have. So if I should say footer widget one, same information will be displayed over here as over here, only in a different style. So I choose for the sidebar home. And then this is what we see. This is the sidebar home. We're going to talk about it in a second. If I go to a different page, for instance, to the ConvertKit review, now I see a different sidebar about the followers, the subscribers, an advertisement, and the trending comments and latest tabs. If I go to a different post, I also see that. So there are multiple sidebars and we can assign different sidebars to specific pages in the website. So I go to the back end to appearance widgets. And here we see the widgets. So on the home page, I have one, two widgets. That's exactly what I see over here. I have the tab post widgets. So the three tabs and below that I see popular stories. And that's what I see over here, the popular widget. So if I would get rid of this one and I refresh the page, it is gone. There's only one area left. So over here at the widgets, we can add all these widgets to any sidebar. So we have a sidebar and in that sidebar, we can have widgets. So if I want to have an ad block, I click on it and I assign it to the homepage or I can drag it. But I prefer to assign it because if you have an area over here, it's a little bit weird to drag it all the way over here. It's possible, but I rather just click here and then say assign it to the home page. There it is. So now if I refresh the page, module 26 will be shown, which is this one. So what you can do, you can play around with all these widgets over here. And the blue ones are from the Janus theme and the white ones are regular widgets from WordPress. So if I drag this over here, and I choose an image and I save it and I refresh the page and I scroll down, you see this image. And then there are also things I can do. I can link it. I can change the settings. So let me delete it. And let's take a look at all these areas over here. I want to add an ad block. So I add it to the home page and I go to general and I want it to be an image ad. So I choose an image, it's one of the two advertisements and I can link it to an uh, affiliate link. We'll talk about uh, advertisements and affiliate links later. Right now I want to save it. And then over here I can scroll down, go for the popular widget. I can go for the recent news widget, the social counter widget, also a nice one. Then you can show how many followers you have on Twitter and YouTube and stuff. There's a social widget. People can follow you. So if I add this one, let's click on done and refresh the page. This is displayed. I go for the popular widget. Okay. And after that, I scroll down. I want to go for a new block. 
and then I have a, a different advertisement. So two advertisements in the in the sidebar. Not the same one. So let me see. Yeah, different ones. Let me save it. Refresh. Thank you, by the way, for letting me save that. I also always say, let me save it. So I ask permission, kind of. So thank you, assuming that you grant me that permission. Now we have this. And uh, if we edit this page with Elementor, we made sure over here at the column that it is sticky. So it sticks with us. And what I want to turn off is that our website is sticky or our header is sticky only when we scroll up. I don't want this. So I go to the customizer and the more you play around with this, the easier it becomes to navigate to the website. So I know I need to go to the header options, sticky header, and then say only when scrolling up. So I scroll down from the latest widget on, it starts, it should start scrolling without us, but because the space is bigger than Space here at the left, I don't see it. So if I go, I can also go over here, by the way, to the customizer, to the widgets, the homepage. And if I would remove this one, it will be gone. So you see a really small, it scrolls with us really short. So if I would uh, yeah, get rid of the other ones, you see a bigger area uh, where it will scroll with you. So that's what you can do. This was the homepage. But again, if I go to the ConvertKit review, I see the other one. So if I edit the post, and I scroll down all the way, and I go to the override default template settings, and I turn this on, let me see over here. What I can see, I can see what sidebar is being used, the default sidebar. So. If I go to the appearance widgets, there's the default sidebar. So if I get rid of this social counter widget and I go to a post, it is gone. So I want to have an advertisement over here, also like this one and also like this one. So I leave it as it is. And then below, I want to add an, another block, add block. So I select this one. Let me see which one do I have over here. Okay. Then I choose the other one there. Save it. Refresh. Great. So this over here is a convert kit review. So what I can do, I can go to the widgets. And I can add or remove widget areas. So let me go there, create a new one, and I call this one reviews. Add a widget. There it is. Save the widget. There it is. So I want to scroll down, search for the review for the single post. Here it is. I add it to reviews, add the widget. Let me see if I should. Um, do something over here, not yet. First, let me show it. So I go to the ConvertKit review page, edit the post, scroll down all the way, go to override default template. I did a page down button, so I went down all the way. I turn this on and now I say, choose the reviews sidebar and I want it to be sticky on the top show over here. Look at this. So as long as there's a review, I see this area over here and my goal is for people to buy this. So when they read this blog post and they're like, okay, I want to buy this. Then they can click on buy now and they can buy this through my affiliate link. Isn't that amazing? I think it is. And if you want to, you can also uh, decide to place some other things over there. Again, the advertisement. I can bring it on top.
and then I can select an advertisement. Refresh. And when I have a different uh, review, I think the one from Zelda also is review. I can also edit this post. Scroll all the way down. Overwrite the settings. And choose the reviews sidebar. And there you see it. The review for Legend of Zelda. So that's it about the sidebar of widgets. You can assign widgets to a sidebar and you can create specific sidebars for specific pages in your website. Now it's time to take a look at the mega menu. And the great thing is uh, by now you should know that you can create beautiful looking things like these. Relatively simple. With the Genius theme, you can create stunning mega menus. And when you see them, I think the thought can uh, pop up in your mind like, whoa, this looks so beautiful. It will probably be very complicated to create this. That was my thought. But nothing could be further from the truth. It's easy to create those menus. So let me show you in the next part of the tutorial how to create mega menus. And let me show you how easy it is. So in order to adjust the mega menu, we need to go to a D T W M N B R Y U R T O P L O I eight nine three two dot NL. Oh no, just kidding. We need to go to the back end to appearance menus. So let's talk about menu and let's take a look what is happening here. First, we need to select our main navigation, our main menu. I select it. I prefer to call this one main menu. That's what I do and that's what everybody does these days because the influence I have, it's crazy. No, just kidding. Okay, the main menu. What we see over here is what is configured over here. So I see the homepage with six sub items. This is how it looks over here and this is how it looks over here. So if I would remove one of them and I save the menu and I refresh the page. Okay, so far so good. Well, I don't need all the other home pages, so I remove them. Actually, I don't need them all. I, I just remove them all. Because when people want to go to the home page, they can click on the logo. Save it. So the first menu item is gone. Now, if we take a look at news, look at this. We see six items. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we see all categories and then the subcategories, business, politics, science, and world. And based on what we select over here is what you'll see over here. So all these blog posts have the category politics. Then over here, we have the trending tags, those six United States. Why? And if I take a look here, look at this. The navigation label is news. Then there's the mega menu category. And what is displayed? We did not disable it. We did not use style one, but we use style two. Style two shows the categories, the subcategories, the blog posts or the news items, and at the right, the tags. So if I would select style one, look at this. There's no right area anymore with tags, but still this area and we can navigate over here. If I bring this to style two again, we can save it and then it is back. I open it again. We can choose the main category, which is news. The number of posts. So if I would change it to three, It will only display three posts. I like six. 
what I don't like is every time I save it, everything collapses. And then here are the trending tags and we can decide by ourselves which one we want to have. So if you, I click over here, I can select them. Okay, let's not save it yet. Let's take a look at the menu icons. That means that the word news can have an icon to it. I can enable this. I can use an image as an icon or I can choose an icon and I search for news. Let's see what it's doing. A paper. I can change the color. Now let's save the menu and refresh it. There it is. And now we see all the trending text tags that we have created or that we have assigned. Okay. Then we also have a menu batch. So I can select one that's floating on top or one that's after it. Well, let's do the floating one and let's make this or call this new. Save, a refresh. So that's how it will be displayed. We can have an icon in a certain color. We can have a badge in a certain color. We can adjust the text. And when we hover over it, we see all the news items and all the subcategories. And over here, we see the trending text. Then we have tag. It's the same thing. All the news items about tag and then all the subcategories. We have the same with entertainment, but this time, look, it is different. No tags. So if we take a look at tag, You'll see style two, style two. And if we take a look at entertainment, we see style one. So that's how easy it is. So I can create a new item. So let's do a category fashion. And then by default, nothing happens. I can click on it and then I see everything that's related to fashion. Then I can open it, make this style one or style two. And if I do style two, I can choose a category. Fashion, of course, number of posts, let's say six. And then the trending tags. Menu icon. Okay, let's choose something. And then the badge. Latest fashion. Save it. So in a short amount of time, we've created something like this. An icon, badge, and when I hover over it, I see all the blog posts that have the category fashion. And then here we have the trending tags. And since fashion does not have any subcategories, they're not shown over here. So if I would say news, news has subcategories, then I will see the subcategories at the left over here. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. And one more thing, I want to display six posts. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, how you can create a mega menu. Let me bring it back and then I will be back with you. So you have your website up and running. You're creating content. Now we want to make money. Well, if you want to, let me show you a few ways. The first one is through placing advertisements on your website. And how great would it be if the advertisements that are placed on your websites are actually things that your visitor, visitors are interested in? Well, that's what they do with Google AdSense. So let me show you how to implement Google AdSense in your website. So in order to put Google ads on your website, you can go to adsense.google.com and you can get started over here or you can sign in. I have a complete tutorial about Google AdSense. Search for Google AdSense 30. And I have two tutorials, a complete Google AdSense tutorial and how to get your Google AdSense website approved. Because not always you are being approved because Google only wants to allow high quality websites to publish advertisements. So those two videos will help you. 
So if you have your Google AdSense account up and running and you have added your website and it is approved, then you can follow along over here in this tutorial. What I want to do now, I want to go to ads. Then I go to buy ad unit and I want to choose a display ad. Okay. If we take a look at our website, we see horizontal advertisements, square advertisements, and no vertical advertisements. So I want to create three advertisements. And the first one, I call it square ad, and it will be square like this. Then I click on create, and I need to co copy the code snippet. Now I can go to my website. And here at the right, I can replace this. So I can go to the back end to appearance widgets. And then here at home, there's an ad block and everywhere there's an ads block. I open it and I change this from image ad to script code. And I place the code. I save it. And I do the same thing everywhere where I see an ad block. Uh, let me see. General. Place it. Loop. Okay. Home three. I don't use home three, so I don't use it over here. Here's an ad block plus script code. Paste it. Save it. Default sidebar ad block. So all the square ads are replaced by this code and then uh, Google will automatically based on the interest of the visitor, show the right advertisements for the visitor. So there's a higher chance they will click. There's a footer. We'll leave the footer as it is. Great. Now I click on done. I want to create a new advertisement this time horizontal. I want it to be fixed. I click on create, sorry, the ad name, horizontal ad, create, copy the snippet. Now I need to go to the header. So I go to the customizer. And over here, I need to replace this one. So I go to the header option, to the advertisement. And I use again the script code, paste it, publish, close it. Then I edit the page with Elementor. I'm talking about the home page. Hey, there it is, tube buddy. So when people click over here, I make money. Over here, replace with the script, paste it. Update. And it can be that it is not being shown right away. I don't know. Sometimes it's been shown, sometimes not. Uh, Google probably needs a moment to, to fix everything. I also don't see them over here yet. So now if I go to reviews, convert kit review, here should appear an advertisement. It's not the case yet, so maybe it takes some time before my website is fully activated. But in all the places in your website, then place the Google AdSense code and then it will be displayed. So let me come back to you and show you when everything is working. Right now it is. So I, I yeah, and yes, it's working. Yes, come on. So let me refresh this. There it is again, TubeBuddy. I've been playing around with TubeBuddy like crazy, so that's the reason why I see the advertisement. So it is working. So if I would go to the review, look at this, and when I scroll down, this will stick with us. You can also make the advertisement the lower, the lowest one, but this is an affiliate link and this is an advertisement. Here you get paid when people buy the thing you promote through your affiliate link, and here you get paid when people click. So the question is, what do you want? And now, if we take a look at the overview, done, home, 
I have one active website that's making, uh, let's say, 60 euros per month. Not bad because it only has one blog post. It's uh, passive income with 30. And uh, here I put everything on automatic pilot. That's also what you can do. And then you see ads over here. You see ads everywhere. Even if you click somewhere else, you see an ad. So uh, I, I all explain that in the tutorial about Google Ads. So let's see how I'm doing. Um, Google Ad Sense tutorial. Am I the first one? Yes, I am. Maybe because I'm logged in. Google Ad Sense tutorial. Boom, number one. I like that. So that's how you place advertisements on your website. Another great way to create revenue from your website is by placing affiliate links or affiliate banners in your website. What is affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing is promoting other people's products or services. And when people buy those through your unique link, you get a commission. So I have the J News theme. Let's be honest. I promote it. I give you a lot of value. When I say go to 30corp.com forward slash J News, and you buy it through my link, I get a commission. That's affiliate marketing and that's what you can implement in your website. Let me show you how. Let's talk about affiliate links. If I go to 30 corpushookcom and I go to a blog post or a video, I see this over here. This is an affiliate link, the one funnel away challenge. When people click over here, or let's do this one, they go to Elementor. When they buy Elementor, so let's see uh, where's the pro version. Choose your plan. Website builder. Buy now. When people buy this, I make money. How? Because people click over here. So you can also place a fitted link. So if I go to impact impact.com sorry you can sign up uh, with your current website and then you can start to promote i can start promoting um envato elements or the envato market so i can view the ads so let me search for theme forest and i grab this banner I want to have the ad code. So I copy the code. Now I go to my website. I go to the widgets. And on every blog post or every review, I want to have the ad block. Add a widget. I go to general. I want to make use of the script code. I paste it, save it. And now if I go to any review, I scroll down, it will stick with us. And Voto Market. Best selling WordPress themes download now. And now when people click over here and they buy one of these themes, I get a commission. Also, if they buy it after a month or a few days later, I make money. And that's a great way to make money online. You help people with your blog posts, with your content you create, with your news website. And then you let people click on your advertisements or on your affiliate links. And when people buy things you promote in your affiliate links, you make money. I love it. I think you will love it too. The first sale. Oh man, you will never forget that. So that was it about advertisements and affiliate marketing. There is another way to make money with your website. And that is by creating a paywall. What does it mean with the Janus theme? You can create content and then you can make that content pro content. That means that people can only see that content on your website when they pay you money. It can be a one-time payment for a certain article or it can be a subscription uh, that gives them access to all the uh, content on your website. This is a great feature. Let me show you how it works. So let me demonstrate it. A paywall is a website with news articles and some are free. So if I click here on Google, Facebook, extended work from home stuff, blah, blah, blah. I can read this blog post. Interesting. But 
Over here, I see premium content. Also over here on top, I see that I can log in and then I can upgrade. So if I go to the premium content, I click here and I want to read this. And then after a few paragraphs, the text disappears and it says support the authors and subscribe to content. So I can buy this article, I can unlock it or I can subscribe. So I see more than 100 articles. So I pay once per month or once per year and then I have access to all these articles. Subscribe now. And then I can see how I want to pay. And this is included in the JNews theme. Well, I don't want this tutorial to be five hours long. So if you want to learn how to do this, let me know and I will make a tutorial about it. And what you also can do, you can go to jnews.io, page down, documentation, and then we can go to built-in plugins, post paywall. And there you can learn how to do this. I will make a tutorial about it, but if you can't wait, you can follow this. But let me know if you want to have a tutorial about this. So we're coming to a close. This is the website we have created our logo, a nice banner, and we can place Google ads over here. We see the date. If we want to, we can drag it to any place in the header, add social media icons, let people log in, log out. We can search for things and decide how this should look. We can have a mega menu over here with categories, posts, and trending tags. And over here, we have created the homepage using Elementor with a trending element, our most recent post or article. It can be a review, a video, a gallery, a blog post, a news item, any article. And then over here, we see the latest news of a lot of different categories. Then over here at the right, we have the sidebar with the most trending topics, most recent comments, the latest posts. We can have advertisements from affiliate products or from Google Ads or other advertisement platforms. Our most popular posts. And we can display this in a different, lot of different ways. And the advertisement over here, we have the footer. And if we take a look at this ConvertKit review, we adjusted everything over here. We can show a video, the amount of likes, dislikes, comments. We have the sidebar over here, which is sticky. So people can buy this from any place in the blog post. And over here we have the blog post I've shown you in the tutorial, how to create a high quality blog post. And then below we had so much more things we could configure. For instance, convert kit with the pros and the cons. Another advertisements, the source, the tags. We can go to a previous post, tell something about ourselves. We can have guest posts. We can let other people create posts on our website. And we have the comments. Everything is displayed beautifully. And then you can create a lot of articles and generate a lot of sales through affiliate links or ads on your website. And later you can decide to create a course. And if you want to learn how to do that, you can go to YouTube and search for how to create a course. Let's see if I'm the number one, the second one. And again, almost four hours where I show you step by step how to create a course. So in that way, you can monetize your website even further. So this is the website you have created. Good luck creating high quality content. And then I hope you will have a really successful news or blog website. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for arriving at this point in the video. You have your domain name, your web hosting, you've installed the Genius theme and WordPress, of course, because they work together and you've set up your website. I hope you're really happy with the result. I want to congratulate you on your persistence. If you are here, that means you follow through. That makes me happy. So. We're not done. I'm going to sit different because what I'm about to tell you is a little bit hard. This is just the beginning. What? Ferdy, I just made this website and this is the beginning. I thought I was finished. No, you're not finished. That's the wrong way to say it. But um, what I want to say is there, is there are so much more things you can do if you want to get more out of your website. So let me talk about a few. I, I mentioned already in the tutorial, if you want to learn how to create high quality blog posts, search for how to write a blog post 30. And I have a tutorial two hours long on how to write a blog post. And I dive deep into doing market research and stuff. And this blog post literally made me uh, more than a thousand dollars. One blog post on one website. So that's great. Uh, one other tutorial I want to talk about is about optimizing your website for the search results. So search for SEO rank math. 
Let's see. If I'm the first one, yes. Complete rank map tutorial. Also two hours. I like to make the two hour tutorials to dive deep, to show you everything. So I highly suggest you watch that video and you implement it. So you will be found better on the internet with your content that you create. The third one is WooCommerce Tutorial 30. And there I show you how you can sell things on your website. So maybe you have a website, a news website, but you also want to sell things. Follow that tutorial and I will show you step by step how you can do that. What else? The fourth one, of course, email marketing. Uh, you can uh, create a pop up on your website. Hey, you like this content? Feel free to um, to subscribe. You can even lock content like a paywall, but then they pay by leaving their name and email address. I will show you that in the convert kit tutorial. This is two and a half hours. I put a lot of effort in it and I somehow, I don't know why it's not really taken off, but it's okay. But this tutorial, man, this, it says it made me over $200,000. That's not true. It's just a clickbait. No, it is true. It's, it's crazy. Man, I have a big email list and I send an email with a product that has a discount and people buy it and I make a lot of money. So over the years, it has made me a lot of money. That's what you can watch all for free. And then the latest one, uh, if you want to know more about affiliate marketing tutorial 30, I have a six hour course on how to make an affiliate marketing website, this one. And then, uh, and this also six hours, it's a different one. Uh, affiliate marketing as a whole. So it's more bird eye view, like what is affiliate marketing? And this one is more like how to create a website with uh, and, and do affiliate marketing. So you have 20 hours to watch things. And um, yeah, I hope you uh, can appreciate that. I create all these tutorials for free. Uh, of course, through the ad revenue and affiliate marketing sales, I make a decent amount of money with it. But uh, I appreciate it if you would like it. And I do my best to create better tutorials. So um, when you subscribe, you'll get a notification of that. So thank you. If you have any question about the theme or anything else, let me know in the comments. I do my best to answer them all. Sometimes it's hard because I get more than 100 comments per day. But um, good luck with your website. I hope you will make money. I hope you will be accepted by Google AdSense. If you're not getting sex accepted by Google AdSense, Maybe my video will be banned because of the word I just said ex accidentally. AdSense 30. I have two videos, one on how to apply, a one how to get approved if you're not getting approved. Then steps. So that's it. Thank you for watching and bye bye.